offenses even though they had been disciplined for misconduct within the previous year. The Inspector General's report says the bonus program did comply with federal regulations, but that the idea of giving extra money to workers who owe back taxes conflicts with the agency's mission to enforce tax laws. Shirley Smith, Washington. Witnesses in Florida tell a Senate committee that sea level rise is a costly and growing problem. Tony Winton has more. The meeting of the Senate Commerce On Committee. Miami Beach, it didn't take long for the dollars and cents side of rising sea levels to get attention. Senator Bill Nelson asked Mayor Philip Levine about the cost of pumping back seawater. The cost of this must be enormous. Senator, we're projecting the cost to be anywhere from three and four hundred million dollars. Nelson brought the Senate committee hearing to Miami to highlight the threat posed by rising oceans, but he did it alone. Not even committee member and fellow Floridian Marco Rubio attended. Tony went in Miami Beach, Florida. And that's the news for Radio VR in Washington. I'm Rick Young. End of an era and the beginning of a new one. Today, Pennington's black part of town moved across the river to North Pennington. The Thompson family sold their home on the east side and moved to the old Kirkland Place at 17 Mansfield Place, establishing the all new black neighborhood. North side residents are looking forward to the infusion of fun and funk that the new black part of town is sure to bring to their area. Mayor Mitzi Kranowitz presided over the dedication of the new black neighborhood, unveiling a sign designating it a landmark district. It's lovely, everyone. Pennington's diversity is its strength, whether it's Little Harlem or the so-called neighborhood where Paul and his partner Bryant have that cottage. Sheriff Stevens today announced that the heavy round-the-clock patrols that helped make the old Thompson house one of the safest neighborhoods in town will move with them. This has nothing to do with the black part of town moving here. We just want to make sure that everyone here has a comfortable place to live. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You can take control toll-free here, 855-450-FREE. And that is the Pro XPN toll-free line joining you in studio tonight. It's Ian here. And Brett. Brett is with us from the School Sucks Project. We'll talk more about that here in a little bit. SchoolSucksProject.com is his website. All kinds of stuff, of course, on the table to talk about in the news. Also, the 30 things to stop doing. Brett uh, wants to continue some of these. We'll do them here in a little bit. Uh, we got through number six. I think we were up to number six, actually, yep. last time. And uh, last night, we just randomly, at the very end of the show, got on a, a topic that it's disturbing, very disturbing, This uh, the idea that people, women specifically, um, but I imagine men do as well. Uh, women have rape fantasies, and uh, I've we've talked about this once in the past, and it's disturbing to me to even like talk about this because it seems so wrong. Yeah, well, that, well there's dangerous things to say already that have been said already. Right to say women have rape fantasies is like screaming for clarification right there. Some women, five percent of women. Um, what, what? Well, there's a percent. Yeah, yeah. There's, this article here from Psychology Today gets into uh, it's, a, it's actually a meta analysis of 20 studies over the last 30 years that indicates between 31 percent and 57 percent of women have rape fantasies, and these fantasies are frequent or preferred in nine percent to 17 percent of women. Uh, considering that most many people are ashamed to report rape fantasies, they also may not be entirely accurate. They may be lowball uh, figures. Mm -hmm. Story from Matthew Hudson at Psychology Today. So <clears throat> he says research into rape fantasies hasn't been particularly well publicized. Many people don't want to acknowledge that women have them for fear that all the news will incite or excuse real rape. Uh, but I follow, says the article's author, the Kinsey line that it's better to study the disturbing parts of human sexuality than to keep them in the dark. 
So do Joseph Critella and Jenny Bivona, researchers at the University of North Texas, who published said meta-analysis. They combined 20 studies and a whole field of theory to evaluate eight potential explanations for women's rape fantasies. Some of the explanations overlap with each other and others mutually contradict. So we get from this meta-analysis and presumably his summary of the analysis the eight reasons, supposed explanations as to why women, and again, I don't know how much this applies to men. They don't give those statistics. Yeah. Now, do uh, you mean men being the rapist the or the victim? Uh, yeah, good point. Yeah, that, they don't make it real clear, uh, you know, whether they're talking about women are being the, being raped. Presumably, they are talking about being the victim in mm. this particular okay. story. Uh, so, uh, number one, masochism, the idea that women desire suffering. Women who engage in masochistic sex are more likely to have rape fantasies, but the great majority of women with rape fantasies do not want real rape. Accordingly, masochism may apply only to a small group of women. Two, sexual blame avoidance. Women are socialized to not seek out sex lest they be considered tramps. But if they're having sex against their will, they can avoid guilt. Studies comparing sexual repression to rape fantasies are mixed and overall don't support the explanation, but they may have been using wrong metrics. Sexually repressed women have fewer fantasies overall, but they might have a higher ratio of rape fantasies. In any case, this theory would apply only to some women. Yeah, that's that's an interesting one, but it's hard to believe that they would have these fantasies to get rid of guilt when you think about what rape must involve as far as trauma. Uh, I, I mean, if that is true for some women, and I can't say whether it is or it isn't, I think it says a lot about the shaming of certain behaviors uh, in our culture that I think are deeply ingrained in the psyche of, of people. And you've talked about this a lot on the show for years about um, you know the Puritan values. We still have many laws in the United States that were formed in Puritan times. New Hampshire just now uh, is going to legalize adultery. It's mm -hmm. a, a it's a, a misdemeanor offense to cheat on somebody, cheat on your wife uh, or your husband in New Hampshire. That's going to uh, presumably change at the end of the year as the governor has pledged to sign the bill and the House and the Senate have passed the bill. In fact, the House passed it overwhelmingly. It was like a 200 something to 29. Okay, well why is that even the worst law? I mean, it's I mean, it's such a bad law as far as laws go, right? As far as like what what is out there? Uh it's isn't not that the worst law. Enforcing a contract? Uh, if the state has any function, you know, like the minimal role of government kind of people <laughs> like to talk, if the state has any function, wouldn't it be uh possibly the enforcement of contracts or would people say that's not um, you know, up to a third party like the state to interfere. You could uh, make an argument about that, although one would, I think the best argument against it would be that this is a ridiculous thing for police to be spending oh, time yeah, and, sure. and money on. And they haven't even spent any sort of money on it in the last decade, which is actually shocking because they did a decade ago investigate somebody's adulterous There was like an adultery patrol? There was some sort of, I don't know if it was a patrol, but there's, there was an investigation. <laughs> Somebody did get charged uh, with that crime. But this is the example. We, when we talked about this rape fantasy thing in the past on Free Talk Live, this was the explanation that was brought forth because I had wondered aloud, like, why would somebody have a fantasy like this? And this was the explanation, the idea that women are repressed. A lot of women are repressed sexually. They're instructed to, you know, not be uh, sexual beings, not express their sexuality, uh, to to hold that back. And that that makes them moral and good when they do that. And then when they have sex, that makes them a slut or a bad when they do that. And there's all this programming to that end. And so the idea being that the rape fantasy is a way for that individual to... Uh, to have the kind of the sex, at least fantasy, that they're looking for, to have the sex that, they, that they're that they desiring, but they're not allowed to desire. Right. They're not allowed to want this. And so, oh, well, I'm being raped. I can't do anything about it. So that it's this odd consequence of uh, somebody's biology fighting their programming, basically. Yeah. And, of course, as you pointed out, uh, sexuality has very strange ways of manifesting itself once it's repressed. 
right? So we've we've been through decades and decades of uh, Puritanism. It's it's wearing away at this point, but it still exists. There's still quite a bit of repression out there in this mm-hmm. culture. Oh, sure. And you know, you end up getting all the sexual deviance. I think as a result of that sexual repression, people. Uh, act out sexually in ways that maybe they wouldn't otherwise had they been raised in kind of a open-minded uh, household. Sure. Let's go to your calls and thoughts. Surreal is on the line anywhere USA. Surreal, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian and Brett. Yeah, gentlemen, nice to talk to you again today. Hey, so I have a theory about this too that's kind of similar, and that would be it's not that they want to be raped. But they want to know that a man is powerful, and that's a huge aphrodisiac, that a man can overpower them. Now, she doesn't have to be violent or disgusting or against her will to have that kind of power to to be able to overwhelm her because she wants to submit. Women like to be submissive, and they like to know that a man can please them and that the man can overpower them. And that's a very big turn on. And women are going to disagree with this probably because to admit that would be to, they think, is to admit weakness. It's not weakness. It is strength. Women have strength. And a relationship is strong when she can submit fully and feel the strength of her partner. That's a huge turn on for women. But why take it all the way to a rape fantasy? If what you're saying is true, and I'm sure there's a lot of people who would agree with it, uh, surreal. But if if what you're saying is true, why wouldn't like you know fantasy about rough sex, you know, just being thrown on the bed, that kind of thing? uh, Why wouldn't that be more common? Why are why are rape fantasies so common? It seems. I think this is one a couple of reasons. One of them you already they already suggested, which is uh, that women want. Well, that they are, that society doesn't allow them to be the sexual beings that they are. And the women are more sexual than men, and they have a hard time letting that out. But you're, uh, you're, saying, world, you're saying that not only are women yeah. more sexual than men, but that they want to submit. If you don't mind, Surreal, I'd like to put you on hold. We're going to bring you back here in a moment. Are you a lady listener of the show? And Please. I'm wondering how yeah. you feel about this, about what Surreal is saying. 855-453. We'll put you on with him here in a moment. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I am is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp dot freetalklive.com gold it's like nothing else on earth from the romans through the renaissance from the industrial age to the space age gold has weathered the test of time for six thousand years gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth according to the world gold council and the u.s mint demand is at an all-time high the stage is being set for the re-emergence of gold as the common sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day midas resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-2237 for the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As Good As Gold can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800-686-2237. May I have your attention, please? If you are trying to lose weight, we need your help. We're AF Plus, and we have too much product and too few participants in our nationwide risk-free trial. 
If you need to lose 30 pounds or more and would like to participate, call now. 1-800-967-9495. AF Plus is an amazing, proven breakthrough in weight loss. A once-daily capsule that can help you lose weight in days. It's also one of the healthiest ways to lose weight because each capsule contains natural ingredients, including green tea extract. You'll boost your metabolic heart rate, allowing you to shed pounds in days with just one capsule a day. Be among the first to call for your risk-free trial. Again, we have too many risk-free trials and too few participants. If you would like to lose 30 pounds or more by taking just one all-natural capsule a day, call now to participate in this nationwide risk-free trial. 1-800-967-9495. That number again is 1-800-967-9495. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you're helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it. Use it. Spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You're invited to take control of the airwaves here. Toll free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We're going to get back to Surreal here in a moment. He's making uh, some statements that might be considered controversial. The idea that women, he says, want to be submissive. Mm -hmm. I think he's talking about the bedroom, but maybe he just means in general. I'm not real sure. We'll have him clarify that here in a moment. And if you're a lady listener and maybe maybe you want to disagree with what uh, Surreal is saying, our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Plus, we can uh, bring you up on Skype as well. You can Skype into the show at username lrn.fm. Bitcoins are all over the news but maybe you haven't taken the time yet to learn how to get them. Well, number one, you have to have a wallet, and you can get that from the good folks over at blockchain.info. They've now provided over a million and a half, 1.5 million wallets free, which is great. So it's an easy, safe place for you to put your Bitcoins, which you can acquire over at cashintocoins.com. And they do it when you order less than $40 of Bitcoins through cashintocoins.com. There's no transaction fee. So imagine you can actually transfer one currency into another at cashintocoins.com for no fee. Now, if you go over 40 bucks, there is a very, very low and competitive fee. I think it's the best fee out there. Plus, Cash Into Coins, the instructions are easy. It's safe, fast, legal, inexpensive, and customer service is their top priority. You can use a money order, check, or wire transfer, and you can even donate some of that fee, as small as it is, to charity. Over at cashintocoins.com. That's cashintocoins.com. As we go back to Surreal, he is calling from anywhere USA. We had started out the show with a disturbing story about female rape fantasies, uh, women who are having, and according to the statistics of uh, a meta analysis of 20 studies done over the last 30 years, between 31% and 57% of women have rape fantasies. And that they are frequent or preferred, as it is called, in 9 to 17 percent of women. What is going on here? Why does that happen? Surreal says that uh, he believes that women want to be submissive, that this is a turn on uh, for them, and that the rape fantasies is kind of an extension of that. I mean, I don't want to put words in your mouth, Surreal. Did I sum you up correctly? Yeah, I think that's, that's probably correct. Now, it's the idea that 
not so much that they are submissive, although that is the case, but that the man is more powerful than them. Mm. And yes, that's inside and outside the bedroom. And let me give you some proof that I hope you can take as true because of it's a, a multi-billion dollar industry, and that is the romance novel industry. Every They've done meta-analyses of stories in these romance novels. Almost every single one of them deals with a successful woman who is attractive and single, and she's career successful. She's personally successful. She's got friends. She's popular. The man that she goes for invariably is always makes more money than she does, even though she is a very high-paid attorney, an author, a whatever. Hmm. She's rich. The man in these stories are always more wealthy or more powerful, usually wealthy. So that's, I think, something can be said for that. Well, we've also, we, we've also, we can see, even if money doesn't come into it, I mean, I've spent some time in the field, you know, researching this, and I would say that consistently women are attracted to assertiveness, confidence, mm -hmm. and I would say, like, one of the most underrated qualities that I find, like, just... Uh, most of the women that I've been involved with in my life find really attractive or maybe they find the absence of it really unattractive, and that's decisiveness, you know, being able to Absolutely. make decisions. Women don't like it when guys uh, – I'm sorry. I just did it too. I said mm. we can't say women don't, women think, <laughs> women say because that's – Many uh, women. Right, that? right. From my experience, many women – really didn't find it to be sexy when I would say, I don't know, what do you want to do? You mm -hmm. know, Absolutely. where do you want to go? And I didn't, you know. That is correct. Right. It's so, the same concept because decisiveness I've had that experience is as well. power. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Decisiveness is power. And I think there are two evolution, well, one evolutionary uh, suggested possibility for this, and then one is cultural today. The easy one today is, most men are wussies. They've been brainwashed to think that women are not sexual creatures. They don't treat them like sexual creatures, and they don't treat themselves like sexual creatures. If you are assertive and confident and you're not embarrassed by your sexuality, you understand she's a sexual creature. Oh, she is all over you. Make decisions decisively, even if they're wrong. Admit to them being wrong, but be decisive. That'll turn her on to no, to no, no regard. Yeah. And then evolutionarily, this is sad, but when you think about our upbringing as Neanderthals, probably the first 100,000 years of our evolution, women were raped routinely. That means oftentimes those women had children, and then those genes, and then the theory goes that women – become acclimated to this sort of violence, which is horrible. You can certainly say that. But their bodies react to violence, and sex is a kind of violence, No, even if it's consensual, right? It's slapping. It's <laughs> body parts slamming together. So Just, That yeah, seems like a reach. It does. Now, there are things that happen during the sex. The University of Toronto uh, study shows that, we, that women are turned on by more images of a wider variety of images than men are. Okay, images they, they, of... And, and the theory is that if they didn't lubricate between their legs, they would die of hemorrhaging from the friction caused by rape. So their bodies have evolved to be aroused by many things. This is just one of my... <laughs> I, I that last one strikes me. I you know I can see a lot of what you're saying, and like I say, I've experienced a lot of this as well. Um, the science of the friction between the legs, I, I'm I, I can't get on board with that. Uh, University yeah. of Toronto, look up the study; it's very famous. <laughs> I agree, it's a good school, you know, but I I don't know, I don't know, and um, uh, there was. Go ahead. Well, I just want to say thank you, Surreal. I appreciate it. I wish we would have had a lady listener call in. There's a couple guys on hold. And, uh, I hope we do have some yeah. ladies call. Yeah. Maybe after the fact, they'll get on here and uh, try to refute what they you're saying. They won't call in. They can't. <laughs> they, 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 would, they would have to, well, you know, they can, anonymously, I hope, because it's, you're right. It's, it's such a sad thing that women's 
sexuality is repressed for the reasons that this study was talking about. They culturally repressed and they can't express it openly the way men can. So they have to play games in order to get through life and get what they want. And the man who understands them will make them happy and then they will make themselves happy too. You know, there there is a, something to be said for that, though, because one of the biggest aspects of culture, especially, I mean, we are all kind of descendants of Western European culture. Right? I mean, that those are the values that have come into America, basically through the Puritans and through the British. That's, you know, that thread still runs through right into modern America. And one of the biggest things that's come with that is religion and Women have been treated not so well in religion for thousands of years, and I think there's some reasons why we can get into soon. We'll come back with more. Surreal, thank you for the call tonight. Appreciate the thoughts and yeah. perspective. More on the way here on Free Talk Live. You take control. Gentlemen, in search of a million-dollar smile that'll make them take notice, I mean really get their attention, then get the mud. My Magic Mud. The fluoride-free whitener with no chemicals, additives, GMOs, or bad taste. And safe to swallow. My Magic Mud detoxifies, reduces sensitivity, cleans and strengthens your teeth while it whitens. Comes as a powder for pure whitening power. Start looking good for that special someone. Get the mud now. MyMagicMud.com It's already too late. Criminals have kicked in your door and are now in your home. Before this happens, homeowners have a choice. One, do nothing and hope you aren't one of the 1.4 million families attacked each year. Or two, refuse to be a victim and for as low as $59, reinforce your doors with door devils. Door devils simply attach to existing door frames and have proven to stop the biggest bad guys from kicking in doors. Read our police testimonials of real-life events at doordevil.com. Alarms don't stop kick-ins. We do. Doordevil.com. Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary at fpp.cc as well as weekly news in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com. The monthly newspaper FPP News at news.fpp.cc and books at shop.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on, joined the Free State Project, and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. 
Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up whatever you want here toll-free at 855-450-FREE. We're actually going through uh, a list of reasons that are supposedly the reasons why some women have rape fantasies. Distur- I find the topic to be very disturbing. Yeah. We had Sir Real call in as soon as we got through the first couple of them, and he's basically saying that uh, he thinks that women want to be submissive and that he cites what he considers to be evidence for that. And he said he didn't think any women would call in to refute him. Uh, We do actually have a lady on hold, so I don't know if she's going to refute him or not. We'll find that out here in a moment. Uh, Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Now, also want to let you know about BuzzBox Coffee. Coffee, there's a lot of it out there. And there's a lot of good coffee out there. BuzzBox Coffee is some of that good coffee. It's shade-grown, 100% organic, top 1% grade Arabica. They got that part down. The thing that BuzzBox does that other coffee companies don't do is that BuzzBox has created a program that allows people around the world to buy into their coffee co-op. Plus, they're teaming up with World Vision to offer microloans to people in tough parts of the world in which to live. People that these microloans can change their lives by allowing them to get a piece of equipment for a business or to even open up a business that they wouldn't have otherwise have been able to afford. And we, as Free Talk Live listeners, can help make that happen by buying coffee from coffee.freetalklive.com. Whenever you buy coffee through BuzzBox at coffee.freetalklive.com, a portion of that sale goes to help fund microloans. In fact, we're looking to get 1,000 Free Talk Live listeners to do this so we can fund 100 microloans. But they're not waiting until we hit that 1,000 mark. Basically, every 10 customers that comes from Free Talk Live funds a new microloan through World Vision. So very cool. Not only do you get some great coffee, but you can also help people make a better life for themselves. And you can do it, have it delivered to your door. Plus, you get a free pound to start with. All you have to do is pay the cost of shipping. So really, you can try out the coffee, see if you like it. BuzzBox is really confident that you're going to enjoy it. And everybody who has drank coffee on the show has uh, raved about BuzzBox so far. Here, cof- uh, just go to coffee.freetalklive.com to get your free pound and get started. You can cancel the subscription anytime if for whatever reason you you know decide you don't want to do it. But uh, again, you just pay the shipping cost to get that free pound tonight at coffee.freetalklive.com. We go to the phones where Tennessee Rose is on the line via Skype. Tennessee, you're on Free Talk Live. Hi, Ian. How are you doing tonight? Hey, just splendid. What's on your mind tonight? Well, I had called in with a few questions, um, kind of off topic. I did want to let Surreal know that I kind of disagree with uh, the women rape issue because as a nurse, I've seen the horrendous effects uh, physically and emotionally that it has on the lady. And I can't really um, speak for all the ladies or gentlemen, but I don't think that they really want to uh, <laughs> have this occur to them. Well, I don't think he was saying they wanted to be raped. They they, they just have yeah. the fantasies about it. And that's kind of what we're looking into is, well, why is that? You know, clearly nobody wants to be raped. So why right. do fantasies exist about rape? You know, the other thing uh, is, too, I'd be interested in knowing, like, if women have been raped or even uh you know had anything like that happen would would they be less likely to have those fantasies i would mm. i would certainly would assume so you know the women that you talked about treating uh i doubt very seriously they had the fantasies uh that would be every individual's you know own idea and i'm sure they're not talking about it with anyone mm mm-hmm. Uh, unless they call into this show, but that's Mm -hmm. not, I actually called in because I had seen a couple of videos, uh, and wanted to know if you guys were familiar with the Rochester, New Hampshire, nine twelve project chapter. No. Uh, What's the nine twelve thing? Isn't that like a Glenn Beck thing? 
Yes, sir. Uh, there's a guy by the name of Jerry DeLemus, and he says that he had got a lot of uh, Tea Party type candidates elected. And being that you are familiar with New Hampshire and he is in New Hampshire, we were wondering if that was the case. And could you tell us anything about him, like what he does for a living? Well, and first of if, all, I don't know who that person is. Um, Brett, Jerry are you? Delicious. No, this this isn't really. It's not really my scene. Um, I, what I can tell you though is that New Hampshire is a a place where there are a lot of people who are very active, and a number of people who I would not describe as Tea Party types. I would describe them as Liberty oriented people. A number of Liberty oriented people are being elected here in New Hampshire. We have here the what's called the Free State Project. Uh, I'm not very familiar with the 912 thing. I, I know we had somebody call and explain it a couple of years ago. What is it it's in a some, nutshell? Yeah, if you can summarize it, uh, Tennessee Rose, I'd appreciate it. The New Hampshire 912 Project. Yes. Um, or well, 912 it's, generally. It's like a nationwide thing, isn't it? Yeah. I know that he had claimed that he had done a lot of work with Glenn Beck in getting a candidates elected in your area but for what and for what's the purpose of 912 like what's the the sort of overarching mission of the 912 project what's it for that i'm trying to find out exactly what um jerry delimus is doing uh, with this 912 project in New Hampshire. So you've just to clarify, it's you've like heard... a, a neoconservative front. Uh, oh, okay. Well, that doesn't sound good at all, right? Like neoconservatism right. is bad. Right. And we were kind of, I was kind of wondering, you know, if you guys had any relationship to this project. No, no. we are not neoconservatives. Um, I know you, it sounds like you're new to Free Talk Live. Free Talk Live is a, a show that for, primarily has uh, behind the microphones voluntarists, maybe minarchists. Uh, these are people who believe that government's involvement in our life should be very, very small, very, very yes. limited if it exists at all. Um, you know, the, I personally am against the idea of a state, period. I don't like the idea of the state, which essentially is this kind of construction that allows men and women to rule over other men and women. I have a, pro a real problem with that. So what's happening in New Hampshire is, and I've never heard about this 912 thing, and you know, my ear is somewhat to the ground as far mm -hmm. as politics and things like that yep. uh, are concerned. Although Rochester's on the other side of the state, so it might as well be a whole world oh, away okay. uh, from okay. from Maybe Keene. That's but it, okay. yes, there are tea parties that happen in New Hampshire. There's, uh, there. I don't know how often they're happening these days, and I don't know anything about a nine twelve thing happening in any active way. But okay. I also don't care about it either because, like I said, you know, I'm not a neoconservative. I'm not a conservative. I'm not a liberal. I believe in freedom, and that's the kind of person I want to be uh, to have it attracted to New Hampshire is someone who also believes in freedom. Somebody who's willing to do something to achieve liberty in our lifetime. That's what the Free State Project is about. That's why I moved here from Florida uh, back in 2006. And to me, the Free State Project is the most, the single most relevant political movement in New Hampshire today. Uh, oh, okay. So that's my answer for you. Anything else you want to well, share great. tonight, Rose? Well, no, thank you so much. And I appreciate your time and your information. And uh, I'll be listening in, and you guys have a great evening. Thank you for the call tonight, you too. Tennessee Rose. Appreciate hearing from you. you Sounded great there on Skype. Yeah. You can call in on Skype with username lrn.fm. We'll come back to this eight eight reasons, supposedly, why a number of women have rape fantasies. Very disturbing story. We'll get back into it here. Uh, but to the phones first, we've got Dre calling from Michigan. You're on Free Talk Live. Dre. Hey, how you guys doing? What's on your mind, Dre? Uh, hey, I'm... I'm calling because I'm I'm try I'm calling for support for uh for some my cats Michigan Coalition Against Tar Sands in, in Michigan against I don't know what you guys know but my cats M I C A T S that's the Michigan Coalition Against Tar Sands Tar uh, I don't know Tar what? Sands tar or Tar Sands. Okay, wh what tar is it? Sands. Okay, so in 2010, uh, Kalamazoo River had the largest inland oil spill. In the, American, in, in the United States. All right. Stand by, Dre. We'll bring you back here in a moment. You can tell us uh, the rest of the tar sand situation. Sounds pretty gross. 855-450-FREE is the toll-free number, and you 
can bring up whatever's on your mind here on Free Talk Live. Everybody wants to know, what can you buy with bitcoins? Isn't there like a Bitcoin general store or something? Well, yes, now there is, and it's at bitcoingeneralstore.com. BitBrew and the Bees Brothers have teamed up to create a place where U.S. customers in the lower 48 can shop for, well, anything, with free shipping. What can you find at bitcoingeneralstore.com? Bitcoin apparel, stickers, gifts, precious metals, physical bitcoins, coffee and honey, of course, and electronics and computer accessories. The folks at Bitcoin General Store are true Bitcoin believers who don't even use third-party payment processors. They get their inventory direct with Bitcoin and pass on the savings to you. Shop at BitcoinGeneralStore.com with confidence that you are supporting a real Bitcoin economy. you got to see what they have to offer. Visit BitcoinGeneralStore.com today. That's BitcoinGeneralStore.com. Hey everyone, have you heard about the no-no hair removal device that's sweeping the globe? If you want to go weeks without shaving and get smooth, professional quality results, here's our favorite host, Cheryl, for no-no hair removal. Thanks. Hey gals, I love talking about my no-no. It's this cute little hair removal system that you can take with you and use almost anywhere at home or on the road. No more expensive in-office treatments, painful waxing, and no more wasting your valuable time. Got unwanted facial hair? No-no has patented Thermacon technology that works on all hair and skin colors so it's perfect for using on all body parts and now you can take advantage of this incredible risk-free trial get the no-no the facial kit a travel case and a $100 discount shopping card and you don't risk a penny to try it try the incredible no-no hair completely risk-free call 1-800-953-6062 that's 800-953-6062 800-953-6062 Coplock.org slash pivothead. To ensure that a record of the truth of police interactions exists and is accessible, we each need to fill. That's why we're happy to announce the Accountability Through Transparency video contest, the winner of which will receive a pair of pivothead sunglasses. For more information and to submit your video entry, go to cutblock.org slash pivothead. One, document with a camera a police employee exhibiting double standards or the standards we expect them to live up to. This can be done while on foot, during a vehicle stop, while submitting an open records request, etc. 2. Upload your video to your YouTube channel. 3. Fill out the form at coplock.org slash pivothead by the deadline of midnight Eastern Standard Time, May 23rd, 2014. 4. The winner, chosen by contest sponsors, will be notified by email and the pivothead sunglasses will be shipped once a mailing address is received. Coplock.org slash pivothead. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Are you looking for camping, hunting, survival, or shooting gear? ManVentureOutpost.com carries the name brands you want at the lowest prices. Ammunition, knives, firearm accessories, archery, air guns, scopes, binoculars, laser sights, tactical flashlights, fish finders, and boating equipment. ManVentureOutpost.com is family owned and has the lowest prices. Go check it for yourself. Get it quick. Get it from ManVentureOutpost.com. Now buy firearms at ManVentureOutpost.com. You're listening to the best Liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Free Talk Live. You can bring up whatever you want here. Toll free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And you can join us online at freetalklive.com. If you like Free Talk Live and you enjoy what we're doing here on the air, you can help support the show by shopping with us. You go to shop.freetalklive.com. You can enter Amazon. There's Amazon US, Amazon Canada, and Amazon UK. You click into the right Amazon for you. Free Talk Live will get a portion 
of the purchase price. Otherwise, all that money is going to go to Amazon. If you just enter through their normal route, they keep all the profits. When you enter through our special links at shop.freetalklive.com, then Free Talk Live gets a cut of the sales. The same great prices, same huge selection that you're used to. It's just that you're entering through our affiliate links. So therefore, we get the, uh, a portion of the sales. So go and start your shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Still to come here, uh, we'll talk more about the supposed reasons why some women have rape fantasies. Very disturbing story. Also on the way, we will get back into the 30 things to stop doing to yourself. Uh, as we started probably a month ago here on Free Talk Live and have slowly been crawling through over time. Yes. But your calls come first. And we go to Dre in Michigan. Dre, you were telling us about the McCats, was it? What, what was the organization? Michigan Coalition Against Tar Sands? Tar Sands. Tar Sands. So tell me more about that. You were saying there was a big oil spill there in one of the Great Lakes? Yes. No, actually in the Kalamazoo River. Oh, in the right, river. Okay. Right, right, right from Lake Michigan, a mile from Lake Michigan. July 27, 2010, Enbridge spilled around a million gallons of tar sands into the Kalamazoo River. Mm -hmm. And what has wow. happened is, yeah, so, and what has happened is many people in that area are dying from health implications from kidney and liver failure and cancer. And a lot of people, you know, don't, haven't even heard of this. And it was the largest inland oil spill in the United States. Now, why is so it that do you feel like the oil spill would cause uh, cancer? Uh, is it that people are out there bathing in it, or is it somehow making a way into their into their daily lives to to affect them in some way? Well, the people of Marshall they lived right off the Kalamazoo River, and when and when the oil spilled, you know they had to endure these health implications. Yeah, I think it's a the the type of oil. Uh, I forget what it's called. Maybe uh, butumen is like a particularly bitumen. 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 That's right. It's a particularly dirty kind of thick crude oil. And there's lots of different kinds of oil, hmm. right? So it's possible that it has a higher toxicity. It's possible that it made its way into drinking water, uh, which I'm guessing would be. The, I'm guessing that would be the worst case scenario as far as the health of nearby people is concerned, is that it would get into drinking water. So, Dre, yeah, what is it that, that people are are doing here? I mean, the, is the area still a mess? Has it been cleaned in some way? Has nature kind of taken care of the problem over time? Or is it still just an ugly, you know, this spill location? What's it like now? Okay, so what's happening is, um, like the BP spill in Alaska, they, uh, the Enbridge company used core exit, core exit to absorb the oil. And this is the most toxic substance and actually creates more hazard and harm to the people that live near and around the river. And you got to realize Michigan is the land of 10,000 lakes. So, you know, this is the fresh, you know, the 20, uh, I think 40% of all the fresh water is in Michigan. And from the toxic tar sands underneath the Michigan, uh, underneath the Great Lakes, that same pipe flows. So luckily it didn't break inside the, one of the Great Lakes. It only broke on the river. Unfortunately, for the people of, of Marshall, Michigan, you know, they have to endure right now, you know, some kidney, liver failure, cancer. So anyway, real, really fast. So wait a minute, cat, though. You think it might be from the, the whatever this substance they actually used to clean up the oil might have caused the illness, which would make more sense than the oil causing it in such for so many people in such a short period of time. Is that what the speculation is, that their cleanup effort was irresponsible? Yes. Okay. Their cleanup effort is irresponsible, and they're not being held accountable. Uh, I mean, people that live on the river, you know, if, if they pay them off, they have to sign gag orders. Um, I mean, Michigan's been a hotbed right now for that. Um, the MyCats, you were talking about women, you know, having rape fantasies. I'll tell you, there's some strong women out here, and they're not having rape fantasies. They're having fantasies of, of bringing this company down to its knees and holding them accountable. Okay, you know? well, this is the this is the this is the narrative that we hear again and again, and we all know who is going to be bringing them to account. It's going to be either the government of Michigan or the EPA. And 
unfortunately, those organizations are really, you know, and I'm, I believe that, you know, taking good care of the environment is a, is a really important thing. I've been talking with a lot of people lately who are practicing permaculture, which is kind of like a non-aggression principle for the earth. Like, I, I really believe that. But um, again and again and again, I hear this narrative coming from people who consider themselves to be environmentalists that these corporations, these polluters have to be punished. Well, what I would be interested in hearing is some ideas in actually preventing these things from happening. There was uh, when BP spilled in the, um, the Gulf of Mexico, there was this talking point that was being repeated by. Uh, you know, not just the left wing media, but I heard the uh, White House press secretary say we want to have our boots on BP's throats and people were cheer on, you know, BP's throat and people were cheering that because, oh, look, they're they're giving it to BP. Yay. Let's punish BP. And that's what this is all about. Right. What would have been great is if this company in Michigan didn't spill 900,000 gallons of oil into a river because once that happens like everybody loses everybody's already lost you know now obviously i think that people who are having their uh you know their health affected people are losing loved ones people are stricken with cancer or liver disease is for me you know as i think as a compassionate person a little more tragic on a mass scale than a company losing you know however much money 900,000 gallons of oil is mm -hmm. and especially when it might have been attributed to their um lack of you know something they did wrong but no one is more incentivized to prevent spills than the oil companies because the oil companies are there to make profits the governments have no incentive to especially the EPA, because if there's if nobody is polluting, the EPA doesn't have any justification for its existence well, anymore. Well, Dre, it seems like you've been following this case pretty thoroughly. I know that in the BP situation, government regulations restricted the amount of liability that BP had. It was only something like seventy five million for cleanup or something like that, where it was going to cost far more. And of course, then taxpayers were on the hook for the remainder of it. So ultimately, the federal government was the BP's best friend as far as limiting the cost of their liability in that case. Have you seen anything similar happening here where this company, uh, Enbridge, is being treated uh, better than you think they should be by the government? Okay, well, let me tell you this. Um, you know, you said, like, you, the government had their boots on, 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 their, on the necks of the company. Yeah, which I'll I think is right not now. a constructive attitude for having a cleaner, better environment. Right? It's also not true. It's just I a mean, punishment model. Yeah, I mean, it's just a punishment mentality that solves no problems and prevents no problems. But go ahead. Yeah. You know, I agree with I, I agree with you. It's in the interest of the oil company to not have spills. I mean, that makes sense. Yeah. But if apparently, if they do have a spill, wouldn't you? If you own that company, wouldn't you want to take care of the people near the river? Or I mean. I would. I would make it a priority, even if I didn't care about the people at all. Uh, the people at all, and I mean, I like to think that I care about people, and like I said, I consider myself a compassionate guy. But e for no other reason, even if I was just a you know a cold, heartless uh, CEO of an oil company, there's still like uh, PR. You know, you can't just like sp <laughs> spill almost a million gallons of of dirty oil and then run away or, you know, go and hide behind a government that's going to protect you. Well, that's what I was wondering, yeah. Dre. I mean, do you know of any examples in this case of how the government actually is protecting the company rather than holding them accountable? Okay, well, I can tell you this. Um, you talk about PR and the company uh, wanting to have good PR. They are actually putting their boots down on the activists, particularly the MICAP. In fact, last, the other, uh, two days ago, a young girl who did a tree sitting, they were, they were reconnecting the same pipe that, that did a spill. They were fixing the pipe because they're going to send double the amount of crew down that pipe. So they were, and she did a tree sitting. She did an action. Yeah. And they arrested her, and, they, and she's now in prison. She's now in Indiana. She's serving a month in prison. Okay, well, the company didn't arrest her because the company doesn't have the uh, 
ability to use force and get away with it. Only the Sounds state, like the only, only, only the people him. that you're asking to protect you and your organization and the environment have that power. And it seems like in this case, they acted on behalf of the big corporation against you. As they typically do. So looking to the government to solve these problems tends to be uh, not a productive solution. Dre, good luck out there. Thanks for the call and the info tonight. Hour number two on the way. You can take control here at Free Talk Live. Stop harming your body with coffee from grocery stores or most chains. Start making a difference one cup at a time. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer you a free pound of BuzzBox coffee. It's organic, so no harmful pesticides or toxins. Shade grown, meaning less acidity and no heartburn. Try the best of the best for free. Just cover shipping. 10% of future purchases go toward helping us give the gift of human freedom around the globe with at least 100 microloans via World Vision. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. MindThings.com is a fun online game that pits you against people around the world to mine for scarce resources. Do business in a capitalist economy with virtually mined gold, tax-free. It doesn't require a big time commitment. Your little mining robot guy works whether you're logged in or not. It costs nothing to play, but you can buy bonuses. They even accept bitcoins. Go to MindThings.com, use coupon code FTL, and double your mining speed. It's free. MindThings.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Wednesday, April 23rd, 2014. Silver is trading at $19.49 per ounce. Gold is worth $1,287 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $491. Antiwar.com reports three days of U.S. drone strikes and at least one ambush involving U.S. ground troops in Beda have left scores of people dead across Yemen's south and east in what Yemeni officials touted as an unprecedented offensive. Yemen may be finding it oversold the bloodletting somewhat, as now they are faced with 70-plus bodies who they have officially labeled suspects, and none of them have actually been identified yet. U.S. officials cited a sniffer dog as having confirmed one of the ambush slain as Ibrahim al-Asiri, and Yemen is frantically running DNA tests on the bodies, hoping one of them actually is Asiri, because if it's not, that's just more egg on their face. Officials say it is conceivable that either Assyri or Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula militant Nasir al-Wahashi are among the slain, and while the official Yemeni response to attacks usually begins and ends with labeling everyone suspects, the sheer number of dead virtually obliges them to find evidence of someone meaningful slain. You've heard of ShinyBadges.com, but you need to check out the New Causes tab. Every item in that section includes a donation to a worthy liberty project like Antiwar.com. So go to ShinyBadges.com, click on the New Causes tab, and get yourself a quality product that not only supports the cause you believe in, but starts a conversation with your neighbors. Plus, get a free gift when you pay with Bitcoin at ShinyBadges.com. Yahoo News reports, 
As a candidate and civil rights law professor, President Obama had spoken out about the need to reform the criminal justice system and clearly felt passionately about entrenched racial biases that resulted in people being treated unfairly by the courts based solely on the color of their skin. But in his first term, his only foray into criminal justice was encouraging lawmakers to pass the Fair Sentencing Act, which he signed in 2010 to reduce the sentencing disparity between crack and powdered cocaine. The disparity had the effect of punishing black drug offenders far more harshly than white ones when it came to using his only unfettered presidential power to pardon felons and to reduce sentences of prisoners, Obama was incredibly stingy in his first term. Vanita Gupta, deputy legal director for the American Civil Liberties Union, calls his record on mercy abysmal. Obama pardoned just 22 people, that is fewer than any modern president, and commuted the sentence of just one. An applicant for commutation had just a 1 in 5,000 chance of getting a reduced sentence with Obama in his first term, compared with a 1 in 100 chance under Presidents Reagan and Clinton, according to an analysis by ProPublica. To date, out of 10,000 requests, Obama has granted just 10 commutations. Additionally, he has only granted 52 of the 1,600 pardon requests that have made it to his desk. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800 874 9760. Antiwar.com reports, Vice President Joe Biden was in Kiev, Ukraine yesterday, and as you might imagine, the visit focused on condemnation of neighboring Russia. But Biden did not show up empty-handed. He pledged $58 million more in U.S. aid for the nation. This round of U.S. aid will mostly be centered on the upcoming Ukrainian national election, which aims to formalize the regime change imposed by violent protests last month. Biden spent the rest of his time vowing the U.S. would never recognize Russia's annexation of Crimea and demanding Russia forcibly compel eastern Ukrainians, many of whom are ethnic Russians, to stop protesting for increased autonomy. Biden went on to threaten increasingly harsh sanctions against Russia if the protests continue. Russia insists the U.S. is dramatically overestimating its influence. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. This is the Onion Week in Review. Poets across the nation issued a statement Thursday announcing that shadows, inky sharp as the raven's beak, meet the clouds like dusty charcoal on an ashen brow. Citing the ageless gloom of morning and a weary sun, its astral luminescence wrapped in arid gauze, the report noted that doubt lingers in the frail minutes of a young dawn. For what is the sound of hope? For what is life's moment of fulfillment? The supple lie of spring prolongs the inquisition. Father! Father! Do you not sense the dread of autumn's looming song danced in trembling half-step? One, two, one, two. Two. The poets later added, womb, womb, womb. And in local news, a sad sack is bullied by an area goose. In other news, a photographer specializes in those pictures where lights going by really fast look like lines. An entree is apparently the kind you squeeze lime over. And employees finally get that break room bathtub they wanted. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live. We're launching into the second hour of the program. You can take control here toll free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And we've got Skype. You can Skype into the show at username lrn.fm. The we tonight includes me, Ian. And Brett. Brett is here courtesy of the School Sucks Project. SchoolSucksProject.com. You can go there and get lots more Brett plus others as well. Uh, Jason Osborne uh, still part of the show over there. You doing Wes Bertrand uh, stuff too, is that right? Yeah, Wes Bertrand and I are doing a series on the Six Pillars of Self-Esteem, which is a book written by Nathaniel Brandon, famous objectivist psychologist. Excellent. And uh, we're seven parts into that. You can hear... Seven parts out of a six-part 
series? How's that work? <laughs> there's probably going to wind up being about 10 parts. Ah. We did the six pillars, and then there's like some uh, appendices in the book that we're, we're covering as Neat. well. Uh, Are you feeling more self esteemy as a result of the, the review? Uh, it's a good reminder. Like, you know, we're always told that self esteem is something, I guess, that you have or you don't. And one way, great way to get it is by pleasing other people. I think we learned that from a very young age. You know, it's about. Um, do you know meeting the expectations that are set out for us by teachers and parents and society and there are standards that are already there and if we meet those standards we can feel good about ourselves and self-esteem mm. is really you know a practice that has several components and all of those components need to be practiced it's it's about action it's not about possessing it or not and you know if you understand each one of the six components which are um, Living consciously, like, you know, being real about what's going on, paying attention to what's going on. Uh, the second one, accepting what's going on. The third one, uh, taking responsibility. The fourth one, being assertive, which, uh, as we already mentioned, women find very attractive in men. Uh, so said surreal. <laughs> living purposefully and uh, personal integrity. Now, those are not things that you have or you don't. That's that, that was a, You can a, cultivate that. Yeah, you can cultivate that. And just by starting, obviously, with living consciously with those other five things in mind, try to practice them in, in you know, any situation. Well, right. Those all seem very internal to me. So I, yeah. mean, I must not have learned the, all these external factors for self-esteem like you were suggesting that schools are trying to inculcate. Maybe I, I missed that class. I or think something. they're they're just mislabeling what self-esteem is. I mean, know? obviously, it's nice to to help people. And that's going to be a, a feel good thing when you do that. Sure. That's, that's certainly important in life. Uh, but self-esteem really seems to be more like an internal process than anything else and something that you can uh, cultivate, uh, you know, getting rid of negative thoughts and, and focusing on, on more positive thoughts about yourself. Well, yeah, the other thing, too, is that we live in a very uh, a col a cu culture that encourages a lot of self-sacrifice in some ways that we've already talked about. Uh, but w one of the things that the objectivists were actually very good at pointing out is that we are really uh, taught this idea of collectivism being better than individualism, you know, that you should sacrifice mm -hmm. yourself to the collective, that it's noble to do so. Some have gone as far to say that the greatest thing you could do is, like, die for, for your country. country. Yeah, that's <laughs> crazy talk. So uh, that is uh, one thing you can hear on the show. Another is uh, a man named Thaddeus Russell, who's actually getting a lot of play right now on uh, mainstream media. Is he's he? on Fox Good. Business pretty regular, he, uh, regularly, and he's uh, uh, a frequent guest on Sean Hannity's radio show Amazing. all of a sudden. So we grabbed him just in time, just before he blew up. Uh, uh, from his book, uh, A Renegade History of the United States. Schoolsucksproject.com. Go get more of Brett there. We're talking, uh, coming back now to the topic we actually started the show with. We mm -hmm. got through two of the eight purported explanations and what happened, uh, explanations as to why some women have rape fantasies. This is from a meta-analysis of 20 studies from the last 30 or so years about women and rape fantasies uh, that determine that between 31% and 57% of women have them and that these fantasies are frequent or preferred in 9% to 17% of women. Uh, they're the first two reasons that they claim, and as some of these reasons are contradictory as we'll go through here. Uh, the first two was uh, you know, desire for masochism and then sexual blame avoidance, the idea being that a woman in this case would have a rape fantasy because she's been taught that it's bad to want sex. It's, you know, not, you're not supposed to want sex as a woman, and so this is a way for people who've had that particular viewpoint inculcated into them as children to escape from that the grasp of that sort of uh, societally inculcated viewpoint and to uh, to experience some level of sexual freedom even though it's a bizarre uh, sort of uh, manif manifestation of that in that yeah. they have a rape fantasy this as though that's the the way they can have sex and not feel guilty about it because they're supposed to be programmed to feel guilty about wanting to have sex right it's kind of a strange explanation but it, it yeah, kind of makes sense 
And then the next one here, openness to sexual experience. This, by the way, is coming from psychologytoday.com. In some ways, this one's the opposite of the last one. And it doesn't explain rape fantasies so much as it describes the type of person who has them. If you're sexually open, you entertain a greater variety of fantasies. As one study described rape fantasy among these women, it's, quote, just one more expression of a generally open, positive, unrestrictive, and relatively guilt-free expression of one's sexuality. I don't understand that at all after reading the one that came before it. Now, I I mean, first of all, people should know Psychology Today, pretty reputable on a number of things. Uh, They they have a great education blogs there, actually, uh, about, you know, educational freedom and homeschooling. So it's a good site, and I've spent quite a bit of time there. But it it seems like they're trying to cast the net wide here. Well, they're co- they're two, cobbling together all yeah. of the the uh, the information from all of these studies. Okay. So what they're acknowledging here is that one study may have revealed this, and another study claimed this. And we might be talking about two different types of people from two different backgrounds Perhaps. or sets of influences. What one would lead to number two, and another set of backgrounds and influences would lead to number three. Next one, desirability. Many women like to believe they're so attractive that men cannot resist the urge to overtake them. The evidence for this theory is suggestive but not yet conclusive. The author of this article did a cover uh, study in Psychology Today last year indicating that women with attachment anxiety, that is neediness, have more sexual fantasies featuring submission. So, again, uh, some women may be having rape fantasies because they want to feel so desirable that a man cannot resist his urges. Uh, Next, male rape culture. Some have argued that women have been conditioned to buy into male fantasies of domination. But the prevalence of rape fantasies has not changed much in recent decades, even as gender roles have. Right. And male domination is certainly nothing new. And this kind of relates to Mm -hmm. one of the things that I wanted to address before when we were talking about culture, mostly related to number two, and the impact of religion, especially Christianity on America. And and you could even say Islam on another part of the world today, that there is a great deal of effort uh, and, and dogma dedicated to the subjugation of women. And one of the th- all I have as a theory is that women do have, if they want it, a lot of power over men um, that you know comes from their sexuality, mm-hmm. and that I, I hate to say power over is okay or is a good thing because I don't like to talk and think that way. Well, but they, let's they only have back, it, oh, well, they okay. only have it if the man allows, uh, if, if the man is is de- I guess desperate, I guess you know because a lot of guys will do anything. Uh, to get sex, and in that case, then the woman has total power uh, in that area. But if uh, the man isn't as desperate, then they both come to more of an equal footing, I think, as far as you know, give and take of, of sexuality. Okay, so yeah, if the man had just had sex like five minutes before, yeah, those kinds of advances might not be particularly effective on him. But we all know that we've seen both women use their sexuality Mm -hmm. to get things, and we've seen men respond to it. Um, it, Certainly, they they do. So I think that the the effort to subjugate women because uh, men wanted to steal their power, and how that exactly started, I don't know, but religion certainly served that purpose for thousands. It's, it's thousands of years. It's still, still going. It's still alive in America, and you know the Middle East is basically where America was uh, around the time in a lot of places around the time of the Salem witch trials. We'll come know? back with more. You can share your thoughts here. Rape fantasies. Uh, do you have them? Can you? Are you comfortable with talking about them? And again, this is talking about women. It doesn't mention men. What is the frequency of ma- male rape fantasy? I, I don't have numbers on that. Uh, does mm. it happen? And, and are the males that are having those fantasies being raped or the other way around? This is Free Talk Live. Hi, I'm Lynn, and I am totally blind. Like many who are totally blind, I have non-24, a circadian rhythm disorder that can put your sleep-wake cycle out of sync with the 24-hour day. But I found out there's a new treatment available for non-24. It's called Hetlios Tazimeltian, the first FDA-approved treatment for non-24. 
The most common side effects of Hetlios include headache, elevated liver enzymes, nightmares or abnormal dreams, and upper respiratory or urinary tract infection. These may occur more often in patients 65 or older. It may cause drowsiness, so limit your activity to preparing for bed. Hetlios has not been studied, and it is not recommended for use in pregnant women, children, or people with severe liver problems. To learn more and to hear the full prescribing information, visit Hetlios.com or call 844-241-2424. That's 844-241-2424. Hetlios is now available for non-24. Talk to your doctor today. Sponsored by Vanda Pharmaceuticals. Hi, this is Mark Edge, host of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the very economic engine that powers this country. With a printing press tethered to Washington politicians, bureaucrats, and central bankers, how can we put our trust in paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Come see gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold. With Washington, D.C. delivering more debt and printed promises, common sense tells us the future of the trend is obvious. Everyone listening should visit gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938. I trust Midas Resources for my gold, silver, platinum, and you can too. Again, I want you to have this book. And it's free. It's gold.freetalklive.com or 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Coming up a little later, the 10 best careers for someone at your level of attractiveness. Oh, but right now we have something truly incredible for you. Kenneth Quinn is a real-life psychic medium who claims that he can communicate with dead acquaintances. He's written a new book. It's called Small Talk from Beyond, Speaking with Distant Relatives and Friends of Friends Who Have Passed. Hi, Kenneth. Good to see you. Now, Thank Kenneth, you. you've written that you're able to connect people with the spirits of their old college professors or roommates that they didn't really know that well. When did you realize that you had this gift? Well, it was the day after my cousin's friend's wife's funeral. I was at home, and I suddenly felt a presence in the room with me, and I heard a voice say, it's Vicky, Vicky Solchek, Dale's wife. Wow. We made a Tim's birthday thing a while back, and we talked about how hard it is having a cat. Fascinating. This has been so amazing. This has been <laughs> fabulous. Thank you, Kenneth Quinn, for being our guest. Stay with us, because coming up next, we're going to show you how to lose some of that excessive weight by constantly picking at your skin. This is the Onion News Network. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges start a conversation with your neighbor or your doctor or your family or your school. Now there's teachers and lawyers and business executives and they all wear shiny badges and they all reject the state. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges show the world that you reject coercion and aggression and oppression by the state. Shinybadges.com while our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, you are invited to take control of the airwaves here, especially if you've got some comments on the rape fantasies that a number of women admit to having. We don't know about male rape fantasies. This article doesn't address that at all. Um, but maybe there's something else out there that we could share about that if we find it. Psychology Today has summed up uh, from a meta-analysis of 20 studies about female rape fantasies over the last 30 years. And we're kind of going through their summary of the eight reasons why these uh, things apparently are happening on a fairly frequent basis to where... 31 to 57 percent of women admit to having rape fantasies, and uh, 9 to 17 percent of women say they are frequent or they're preferred. 
fantasy of all of their fantasies. We'll get back into more detail on that. Your calls and thoughts are welcome at 855-450-FREE, or, or you can Skype into the show at username lrn.fm. You also, if you care about online privacy, really need to take the time to look at ProXPN. It is a global virtual private network that encrypts your data, meaning that before your inter- your whatever web search you're looking for or the website you're trying to pull up, Before that information reaches your internet service provider, it's encrypted, and it's then sent along to ProXPN servers. There it's de-encrypted and sent out to the rest of the internet. So essentially, your internet service provider becomes a pass-through. They're no longer able to gather data about you, as they currently likely are doing. They're probably storing the information that you give them, the websites you visit, the search terms you enter. They're probably storing that information for up to five years in some cases. So what do they do with that info? Maybe mine it for information, maybe sell it, maybe give it over to the government. Regardless of what they do with it, you probably don't want them to have that information. It's better if you can keep that that info private, and ProXPN can accomplish that for you because they don't keep records of your online habits at ProXPN. So you get a tremendous amount of privacy for an incredibly low price, plus with their premium account, and by the way, they do have a premium or a, a free account, so you can just go to ProXPN.com slash FTL, download their app, and get started right away. But the free account is limited in some ways, and one of those ways is bandwidth limited. If you get the premium account for all of 5 bucks a month with our discount code FTL20 when you buy the annual package, just when you get that real price breakdown, uh, when you get their premium account, you get unlimited bandwidth. You also get servers around the world that you can connect to. You can privately torrent. You can also get past regionally blocked websites, maybe local, uh, like an at-work block, or a, if you're at school, certain websites you can't get to. you got ProXPN on your device. You can get right around those things. ProXPN.com slash FTL. There's an app for Windows, Macintosh, iOS devices, Android devices, and there's instructions available to get it working with uh, Linux users. It's a little bit different if you're on Linux, but it's pretty simple. Just email their support department to get that information. Go to ProXPN.com slash FTL. Grab the app. Get started. Use promo code FTL20 to save that 20% for the lifetime of the account, and feel good because there's a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. You've got nothing to lose with ProXPN except your privacy. So go to ProXPN.com slash FTL to get started. We're in the middle of the list here of uh, purported reasons why it is that women have, some women, uh, have erotic rape fantasies. And we're about halfway through the list. Next on the list here, biological predisposition to surrender. In many mammalian species, the male must pursue and subdue the female in order to mate. Women may be programmed to surrender to the successful dominant male. Just like many other theories in evolutionary psychology, this one makes sense but has not been tested empirically. I don't. Yeah, I mean, there there could be some biological hardwiring for that. But, you know, one of the things that we're trying to do is to, you know, use these brains to, in some cases, overcome. Overcome the biology. Yeah. No, I agree with you there, but that wouldn't necessarily, even though we're actively trying to overcome certain instincts that we might have um, as people, that doesn't mean that the thoughts won't come, right? Or in this case, the the fantasies. So even though, you know, anybody who's having this fantasy knows they don't want to actually experience That's true, yeah. They keep having the fantasies. Yeah, and sex is really not a time for, you know, let's be reasonable here. You know, that's that's not what it's about. It's about something else. Next on the list, sympathetic activation. The sympathetic nervous system becomes engaged in times of stress or danger, activating a fight-or-flight response marked by increased heart rate, respiration, pupil dilation, and genital arousal. Just like on a roller coaster, fear and excitement go hand in hand. And that may, I think these last two kind of sound a little bit like what Surreal was saying earlier, that, you know, that this could be a a natural uh, response to the way things used to be, where there was, where rape was more common, you know, prehistoric times or something like that, and that, uh, that women would have to, uh, be prepared for that physically down there in order to prevent more damage from occurring, uh, prevent their, their deaths. I mean, that's a shocking thing to think about. Yeah, absolutely. But they're suggesting that these studies might have actually suggested that. Next on the list, adversary transformation. In one survey of romance novels, which tend to be written by and for women, 
The lead female character was raped in 54% of them. The male heroes are usually rugged warrior types, and these books may illustrate a desire to conquer the heart of the rapist and tame him for marriage. Some of these are so weird. I don't even know what to say. About I it. yeah, it's this is really tough. <laughs> Some of these I'm having. Ladies, a hard time. would love to get your input on <laughs> no this. No kidding. Even yeah. if it's at another uh, another night that you want to call in. Reaction to trauma is next on the list. This one's not mentioned in the study, but Brett Carr, a psychoanalyst who has conducted the largest survey of sexual fantasies ever, argues that most masturbatory fantasies are attempts to transform early difficult experiences into pleasure. So those who have been sexually abused may try to master their trauma by taming those experiences. So that would kind of go against what we said before uh, when we had, uh, what was her name, Rose on the phone, mm -hmm. um, that I would think that women who had this kind of experience and trauma would be less likely to think about such things, to fantasize about such They're things. They're saying I the opposite think, may be I true. I would think. Lazy. Yeah. The final one here. Laziness. It's also not mentioned in the paper, but one writer, Tracy Egan, hints at this explanation in her essay entitled One Rape Please to Go, about hiring a male prostitute to play rape her. Uh, as a girl, she writes, my equipment can be trickier to manage. Therefore, I need to be a boss in the bedroom to ensure I get worked the right way. But it gets really tiresome always being the one in charge. I asked Carr, and this is the, uh, uh, I'm not sure who Carr is, I think that might be one of the studies of the author, of the author's studies, uh, author of the study, rather, in this case. Let's see. Nope. I'm not sure where the name Carr comes from here. It was, I asked, it was Brett Carr? Oh, right? Brett Carr. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Oh, yeah. So he's the psychoanalyst who did the largest survey of sexual fantasies. I asked Carr whether it's unhealthy to entertain rape fantasies. And he says at one point, or at one level, they pose little problem because they represent a highly normative part of female sexual fantasy. He said that many women have them, and most of these women easily distinguish between reality and fantasy. But in some cases, it may recapitulate forgotten abuse that hasn't been processed properly, or it may reflect masochistic tendencies. A woman should see a professional if she's troubled by her fantasies. Julie Schulman, a clinical psychology professor at Alliant International University who studied rape fantasies, told me, quote, the sexual and emotional health of such engagement can differ greatly. And she'd like to see more research on the topic. A little bit more here coming up, 855 450 free. You want to chime in here, get into the conversation. We'd love to hear from you, especially if you are a lady and you want to talk about actually having these things and how you've dealt with it, what, it, what it's like uh, to even know you do that. It's Free Talk Live. You've been lied to. Lied to by Washington politicians and the Wall Street propaganda machine. My name is Brett Kitchen, best-selling author, and I want to give you free access to my new DVD set, The Millionaire Black Box. Because after losing 35% in my IRA in the crash years ago, I said enough. And since then, I've filmed interviews with dozens of millionaires across the country. I was shocked to discover they don't use mutual funds or worry about stock market crashes. They make double digits in good years and bad. Call now to get this DVD where millionaires reveal five specific wealth strategies like private lending contracts, how to use your IRAs or cash in the bank to make potential double digits each year, tax-free retirement income using the biggest benefits left in the tax code, and how to beat inflation with two strategies you'll never hear from Wall Street. Call 1-800-324-3030 to get free access to the Millionaire Black Box videos and learn the secrets the ultra-rich use to grow your money and protect your wealth. Plus, the next 47 callers get a free copy of my best-selling book, Safe Money Millionaire. Just cover shipping and handling. Call 800-324-3030. Again, that's 1-800-324-3030. 1-800-324-3030. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keen. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. 
Have you ever wanted to help a hardworking person get their business off the ground? Then join me in enjoying some BuzzBox coffee. Let's make a difference, one cup at a time. Join us in helping people buy their own coffee farms through at least 100 microloans via World Vision. Free Talk Live coffee drinkers will truly change lives forever. To get the best coffee you've ever tasted, it's organic, shade-grown, and top 1% Arabica grade. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. The first pound's free, just cover shipping. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Uncovering the secrets and exposing the lies. That's what the readers of FreedomsPhoenix.com get every day. FreedomsPhoenix.com constantly providing the information, the real news about government policies, and the real relationship we all have with the coercive government. The real condition of the economy, innovations in technology, breakthroughs in energy health, and computer science. Learn the truth well before it's admitted to in the lamestream media. The corporate media, nothing more than distributors of government propaganda, but now there's an alternative. FreedomsPhoenix.com. Constant news updates on the issues that affect your life in the most important ways. With liberty and property under constant attack, FreedomsPhoenix.com provides the understanding behind the propaganda, and it encourages the participation of its readers. Go to FreedomsPhoenix.com. That's freedoms with an S, Phoenix.com. FreedomsPhoenix.com. The revolution between the ears has already happened. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Bring up whatever you want here. Toll free, 855-450 free. Why is it that some women have rape fantasies? So far, uh, we haven't heard from any of the lady listeners out there. Maybe either they don't have them as often as the studies are suggesting, or it's a very uncomfortable topic and uh, nobody really wants to talk about it, uh, especially uh, not the, the ladies in this case. 855-450 free, though. If you change your mind, you want to get on the phones here, you can bring up anything that you want. We're sharing an article from Psychology Today that is an, an, it's a kind of a look over an analysis of 20 studies about female rape fantasy uh, that have been done over the last 30 years. They go through a list of various potential reasons why it is that women have these rape fantasies. The article doesn't talk about male rape fantasy, and it doesn't really clarify whether or not these rape fantasies are being the victim of the rape or the, the rapist, but presumably it's about being a victim of the rape. And uh, a little bit more of the analysis here from psychologytoday.com. We'll continue that in a moment. also want to invite you to the website at freetalklive.com. We've got a mobile site for those of you with a smartphone. You want to get quick access to live streams, the podcast, and the webcam. You can now do all that from our mobile site at m.freetalklive.com. That's m like mobile.freetalklive.com. So question from uh, the author here at psychologytoday.com. Should women share their rape fantasies with their partners? question uh, was answered by one of the, uh, this is the guy who Brett Carr did probably the largest, apparently the largest study on the subject. But anyway, uh, obviously, quote, a loving, committed, sympathetic man would respond delicately and sensitively to such news, but a more sadistic partner with conscious or unconscious sadism towards a woman might use the information more destructively. One must proceed cautiously. I asked my friend Rachel Kramer Bustle, an editor at Penthouse, who has written about rape fantasies for The Village Voice, whether she thought it was unhealthy to act them out with men. She says it's not unhealthy per se, saying, quote, At the end of the day, the woman has control over it, and it can be hot to give yourself over completely to someone within that context, knowing that you can trust them. She added that it's probably a tricky fantasy for men, as that is something that is inculcated into them not to do. I have to say that, you know, if my partner said anything at all about, you know, wanting to be raped, just like fantasy, fantasy raped, I would be very disturbed and not want to have anything to do with it. Yeah, yeah. 
I I think it is. I mean, it's something that you'd you'd want to talk about. I, or I should say that I would want to talk about with a person if they did. But I've never gotten any inkling that this was something that people that anyone that I've been with was interested. Well, interested that's a good. In. You know, the, the question would be, um, if they were having those fantasies, would they tell you about it? Yeah, that's true. Would they or would they even you know uh, acknowledge it themselves? I covered it's a, a dark subject. Yeah. Exactly. I covered a study supporting such inhibition uh, in the April issue of Psychology Today. It showed that men are slower to recognize words associated with dominance if they've been primed with sex-related words. Uh, pretending to rape someone, Rachel says, is a lot of responsibility to assume. And if you're dealing with a woman who does have a history of sexual abuse in her past. It's extra thorny. Paul Yohannides, Yohannides, author of The Wonderful Guide to Getting It On, raises a couple of good points in a post on his own blog. First, in most rape fantasies, the guy is a hunk and the woman isn't terrified or disgusted. If the rape in these fantasies is nothing like real rape, is it still a rape? The authors of the paper that I reviewed addressed this issue. They note that the difference between erotic and aversive rape fantasies, the second type involving ugly, violent rapists and not much arousal, most rape fantasies, as uh, the other author, jo Jonatis, correctly notes, fit in the first category, that is the uh, erotic rape fantasy, not the aversive one. But there are some constants. The authors write that rape fantasies contain three key elements, force, sex, and non-consent. They go on, Clear, uh, clearly, or certainly rather, in actual rapes, minimal resistance and female sexual arousal do sometimes occur, and their occurrence would not render the encounter a seduction rather than a rape. Second, Jonas writes that the woman uh, with the fantasy is in control because she's the one scripting the scenario. So consent is implied by definition. Here's how the authors address this apparent contradiction. They say, quote, individuals exert control over the contents of their own fantasies, but these activities are against the will of her self-character in the fantasy. So whether, as Jonas, Jonas or argues, erotic rape fantasy is a contradiction in terms depends on how one conceives of the relationship between one's self and one's fantasy self. As you may recall, Kurt Cobain addressed this prickly epistemological paradox in the 1990s with one of his songs, Rape Me. So that's uh, the info there from Psychology Today. Some level of insight, some level of confusion, some level of contradiction in assessing why it is that women, some women, uh, are having rape fantasies. Yeah, and I have to apologize, and I think it probably came through that I had just a terribly difficult time speaking about this with, you know, clarity, uh, because I, I really just don't know. Uh, and it's, it's, a, it's a hard thing to talk about. You were right when you introduced it and said it was disturbing. It's never happened to me. I, I've never had any sort of fantasy about that, uh, about any, any level of domination, physical domination. It's just not who I am. I wonder how common this is for males. That's another side of the story that we're not getting here. Yeah, and, you know, honestly, also from uh, porn, we can see now, you know, everyone's done their own level of research into porn. But sure. what seems to be a consistent theme in porn is that the woman wants it. Just wants like, to be dominated? No, mean? no, 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 no. The woman wants the sex mm -hmm. so bad. She wants that experience so bad. And the man is often the one who's like... Oh, I, don't I don't know. know. It's my, no, <laughs> you know my mom. Uh, you know my yeah. uh, my girlfriend might come home, and she's like, "Forget about your girlfriend. I need you, you know, so badly right now." And uh, so that so that doesn't what seems to play in porn most of the time doesn't line up with this at all, from my experience, anyway. Your thoughts are welcome here. Eight fifty five four fifty free, and also if you've got a. A story that you can point us to about male rape fantasy, I would be interested in kind of getting the other side of the coin, uh, you know, whether or not males are more, more likely to have a rape fantasy about being a rapist or about being raped. I wonder if that's, you know, if there's a discrepancy there, you know, what portion of men are having fantasies in one way versus the other. And again, how do you really get, how do you get a guy to admit that he has a fantasy like that? Yeah, uh, that's got to be pretty difficult. I mean, it's probably difficult enough to get a woman to admit having a rape fantasy about being a victim. Mm -hmm. So very disturbing territory here. And we're going to move on into something more positive about 
things, 30 of them. We're through five uh, as of the last few weeks. Things to stop doing to yourself. And we will get into that here in moments. But Nathan is on the line first on Skype. Nathan, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, Ian. Hey, Brett. Hey. Hi, Nathan. Um, I had two... Uh... I had two questions about this, uh, this study. Uh, the first one is, I guess I'll find out when I read it, but when they say rape, what exactly does, does that mean? Is that a, it, because you could imagine like a bunch of different, you could imagine a continuum of things, right? Like maybe someone enjoys being, I don't know, wearing handcuffs or something. And No, this is, uh, th- this is like, uh, you know, s- s- well, see, okay, that, that's an interesting thing because, you know, I, I, I think it's safe to say, even though I've never had the experience, rape in real life is probably, is definitely horrifying and, and traumatizing. And when it's put into fantasy like this, I and mean, the article made a good point towards the end that, in the fantasy, the woman is in control because it's her fantasy. So in other words, it might play into something similar to like S&M, where... Well, that's what I was getting at. There's a think, safe word. There, you know, there's you think a, there's like a, a continuum of things from... I, I get Because it sounds like they're just talking about horrible, you know, violent things that no one would want to experience. But are well, a lot the, of the things... common uh, key elements, the, the authors of the study, this meta-analysis of 20, 20 studies... Uh, say that the rape fantasies contain three key elements, for sex and non-consent. And so, obviously, when you're talking about S&M, there's consent involved. I mean, people know up front in an S&M encounter what the rules are going to be, the safe word is going to be, what is expected to likely happen in that encounter. Consent is involved from the very beginning. The rape fantasy would, by definition, involve no consent. But if you want to stand by, Nathan, we can bring you back for further discussion. 855 855- 450 free. You can bring up anything here on Free Talk Live. I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact in helping make a difference in the world and one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends to prove just how good it is we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience all you do is cover shipping go to coffee.freetalklive.com buzzbox coffee is organic so it contains no pesticides or toxins it's shade grown so less acidity and no heartburn it's top 1% Arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com I will never forget the day my son Jeremy told me he hated me and slammed the door in my face. I'm behavioral therapist Janet Lehman. Behavior problems can turn the child you love and your life into a nightmare. That's why my husband James and I created the Total Transformation, the step-by-step program that shows you how to fix the worst behavior problems and get your child to respect and listen to you again. No matter what the behavior, defiance, backtalk, angry outbursts, disrespect, we can help you stop it. Now you can get the total transformation for free. All you need to do is get the program and let us know how it works for you. You can keep it forever for free. Limited number of free programs available. Call now. 1-888-912-1595. 1-888-912-1595. That's 1-888-912-1595. one 888 9121595 Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you got to keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at gunsandweed.com or on Amazon. Hey! 
That's gunsandweed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's gunsandweed.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the Internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. MeowBit is free software from the Freedom Fiends that allows you to effortlessly view .bit websites. MeowBit works on all browsers. .bit is a new type of web address that's not controlled by any government or corporation. And we'll show you how to register a .bit domain today using a few cents worth of name coin. If anyone ever shuts down your .com website, users will still be able to get to your site using your .bit address in our free software, MeowBit. Go to MeowBit.com. That's M-E-O-W-B-I-T.com. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. This is Free Talk Live. Getting some interesting responses to a question I asked on Facebook about these supposed rape fantasies that so many women are allegedly having. We'll share some of your responses here in moments, uh, including one from a lady, uh, 855-450-FREE. That's the toll-free number. You can join us on Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. And with you in the studio, it's Ian here. And Brett. We were actually going to bring Nathan back on the line with us, but also want to invite you to freetalklive.com and have you check out a variety of features there. Uh, we give you all kinds of stuff. And you can, if you want, support the show in a few different ways. Uh, if you like the fact that we give you the archives for free and the webcam and all the everything on our website is, is free, you can support Free Talk Live by becoming a Free Talk Live amplifier. AMP stands for Advertise, Market, and Promote, and the idea is you send 5 bucks a month in via any major credit card through PayPal, or you can use Visa or MasterCard right on the front page of our website. And then that 5 bucks a month is going to be doubled for the next several months. We've got some generous matching contributors that have stepped up to match up to $950 a month in contributions. We haven't quite reached that goal yet. We're still a couple hundred bucks away from reaching that, so anything that you donate at this point uh, you know, if you donate five bucks a month, it's uh, going to be matched. If you do twenty-five bucks a month, that'll be matched as well. Uh, and it makes a big difference for us. It allows us to reach out to new radio stations, get new stations on board with Free Talk Live, bring new internet listeners on board through our Google AdWords that we're doing right now. Uh, you can help us with that. Please go to amp.freetalklive.com. Makes a big difference for us when you do that. You'll be sending us to Talkers Magazine's. Uh, convention that they have coming up here in June. We're going there to New York City to schmooze it up with the big wigs in talk radio, and that's paid for by AMP dollars. So you can help us out and get the show on more stations and in more ears. Go to amp.freetalklive.com. You get perks, too, like access to the AMP-only call-in lines, AMP-only forum, as well as the brand-new AMP-only Facebook group. Go to amp.freetalklive.com. More coming up here on the subject of rape fantasies. One psychologist over at Psychology Today questions whether or not these are actually really rape fantasies. We'll get into his response to the article that we read uh, earlier on the show tonight here in a little bit. And then still to come, the 30 things stop doing to yourself. But Nathan's still with us here on Skype. Go ahead with your thoughts, Nathan. Uh, I was going to say during the last segment, I actually had a friend of a friend who was somewhat into this kind of thing. Uh, she liked, apparently I'm told, I was told by my friend that she liked to wear handcuffs or whatever. Um, it's totally different. It's, it's, I don't even submission. think it's the same league. It's the only reason yeah, I but brought it's like up... a simul, it's like a simulated coerced act. If you, if you follow me, it's like, it's like you're pretending it's a, it's, it's a rape, I guess, to, to. Right. Yeah. There's a lot of wobble on the word rape here, I guess, because one of the the things when I when I was when I compared it to S and M, it was only in the sense of the the fantasy that it is the creation in the woman having the fantasy's head, right? So there is a way out, but uh, right, but even there, the way out is like what do they call it? Like the safe word? Like you that's what I mean. Actually... That's what I mean. Yeah, right. Yeah, the woman so... is in charge of just like an S N M is consensual, you know. So there, it's safe in a way. Yeah, but it's still. I guess what I guess I'm not sure what what your answer means then because it's 
it, you're still simulating a coerced act. I okay, guess, I, I, I understand that. I had around. Yeah, I understand that. And Nathan, uh, you, go ahead. I was going to say, uh, secondly, do you agree with Stefan Molyneux's uh, points around this? Because he kind of draws these comparisons. What are his points? Between, he draws a comparison a lot of times between S&M and trauma. And uh, I can I can see where he's coming from, but I'm not sure I agree 100% on that. Well, what are, what's your thinking? Meaning like that? they've been abused in the past, and so that's why they're into s and Is that what you're getting uh, Right. That it's basically completely abnormal contrary to this article which is basically postulating there's some kind of biological basis for kind of having these weird well i shouldn't say weird but these these um fantasies about being coerced in in sexual ways you know that sounds very very similar to what i i might have heard dr drew advocate on loveline years ago that somebody who is abused will sort of manifest that abuse in sexual, you know, depravity or whatever. But on the other hand, I bet you can find examples of people who never were abused who are into uh, freaky stuff. Well, here's my experience. Right, like my my friend of a friend was not abused, but that's that's why I'm not completely on board with that. But uh, what do you think, Brett? Okay, my experience from 2002 to 2004, I taught at uh, I was the lead teacher of a specialized campus in a boarding school and the campus was set up essentially to isolate kids who had what was called sexually reactive behavior issues, meaning that they had a really heightened sensitivity to anything sexual. And it had started when they were sexually abused. Mm. What we found, or what I found while, while I work there, it, from looking at a lot of their uh, case files, was that they would have experienced a you know molestation or some other kind of abuse at a certain age by somebody else at a certain age. So if they were six and they were sexually assaulted by somebody who was, say, 14, when the time came that they were 14, they would seek out somebody very close to the age of six mm. and replicate that behavior in an attempt to normalize it or maybe even in an attempt to steal their power back from the original wow. perpetrator of their sexual assault. So. Uh, yeah, I think that past traumas definitely can lead to I, deviant is is uh, too soft a word for sexually assaulting somebody else. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think, and uh, I I saw this a lot. So uh, the psychologist who worked with me on the clinical aspects, as we tried to align the clinical and educational aspects of the program, he said. It's very much like clockwork. It, it's like Every clockwork. Time. He said it happens so often that it is you can you could basically set an alarm to it. Hmm. Nathan, uh, any thoughts? Uh, no. Wow. That that's uh, that's really unfortunate. I'm yeah. uh, I'm I'm sorry that the what it, how long where was that program? Was that in the United States or? All I can say is it was in Vermont. Thanks for the call tonight, oh, Nathan. Okay. Appreciate Thanks. hearing from you. Story uh, to follow up, this is a response to the article we were reading earlier, also at Psychology Today. Different author, Paul Unitas, uh, recently read Matt Hudson's excellent post, Why Do Women Have Erotic Rape Fantasies? It got me thinking more about rape fantasies and why I don't think there's any such thing. That's because when we talk about rape fantasies, we don't define our terms. If you ask women who have rape fantasies to describe the man who's raping them, he puts that in quotes, You'll find he's not exactly what we picture when we think about the average rapist, unless the guy's been spending six hours a day in the prison weight room or read Shakespeare to Bubba, his cellmate. Look at the buffed-out dude on the book cover that was included to illustrate the article. It was a, kind of a romance novel cover. We're talking a serious, bodice ripping hunk. I don't think that's the image that emerges when police or emergency room personnel ask victims of rape to describe the man who just raped them. The fact is, the guy who's doing the raping, again in quotes, in a lot of women's fantasies of forced sex is someone who she might want to have sex with anyway. Often missing is the terror, violence, confusion, rage, and disgust that makes rape, rape. The woman with the fantasy is in control by virtue of who she has raping her, or because she's the one scripting the scenario, while control is the last thing that a woman who's being raped has any of. 
even if the woman's rape fantasy involves her being degraded or humiliated by an anonymous aggressor or gang of gross guys with missing front teeth, her fantasy doesn't make her fear men in real life like an actual rape often does. It doesn't make her afraid to go out of doors. Even if her fantasy is a way of processing something overwhelming from her past, we would never suggest she walk alone at night in dangerous places to get a first-hand opportunity to enjoy her fantasy. And even if the depth psychologist would say that as one part of her mind re really is being raped, they still can't get around the caveat that another part of her mind remains in control. Of course, I'm sidestepping what might be the various cultural, religious, and perhaps biological reasons for why so many women have sexual fantasies where they are taken by a man instead of being the taker. But unless you're a radical feminist, I think you can see that there is a significant difference between that and the realities of an actual rape. So is it really rape that we're talking about when we say a woman has rape fantasies? He says he doesn't think so. I would suggest that for most women, erotic rape fantasy is a contradiction in terms, even for those women whose fantasies of being raped include terror, degradation, and unwanted force. I can't imagine that anybody fantasizes about having acts of aggression committed That's against That's why it's them. such a shocking topic to, uh, to discuss. And I like what Sharif, who actually linked me to this on our Facebook page, says about this. He kind of sums up that whole article by saying that they're more likely submission fantasies. They're fantasies about the kind of man, the kind of scenario to, uh, in which a woman wants to submit. That seems more, more realistic to me. Sure, yeah. 855 450 free. If you are a lady, though, and you want to comment, we've got a full hour remaining here. Hour number three is on the way. Coming up, we'll uh, get positive with 30 things to stop doing to yourself. It's Free Talk Live. There's a treasure hunt going on at mathgate.info, a Bitcoin treasure hunt. You can find Bitcoins by proving theorems. So learn some logic, do some math, find some Bitcoins. Even better, mathgate.info is designed to be used anonymously. So connect to mathgate.info through Tor, prove some theorems, find some anonymous Bitcoins. Don't wait. Others are already searching for the Bitcoins. Go to mathgate.info today and join the treasure hunt. There are anonymous Bitcoins to be had for the taking at mathgate.info. Lumber Liquidator's once-a-year hardwood flooring clearance sale is going on now. This is the biggest flooring event of the year with five days of historic hardwood flooring deals like top-quality clearance flooring for just 19 cents a square foot, gorgeous Aberdeen birch engineered hardwood, and even horizontal natural bamboo for just $1.49. Plus, more deals at your local store. So go to LumberLiquidators.com right now and find the store nearest you. But hurry, their famous April sale ends Monday the 28th. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty News and activist updates. Online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Wednesday, April 23rd, 2014. Gold opened today at $1,287, silver opened at $19.48, and Bitcoin is trading at $487. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Voice and Exit, maximizing human flourishing through radical innovation. Tickets on sale now. Get 10% off with promo code FREEDOM, June 21st at Austin Music Hall. Get yours at voiceandexit.com. Support comes from Dorothy Arminger at Capstar Lending. For your residential mortgage needs, call Dorothy. 
or apply online. Call Dorothy.com. NMLS 216-624. And support comes from My Magic Mud, all natural teeth whitener. Go to MyMagicMud.com to hear a short interview with Dr. Griffin Cole. That's MyMagicMud.com. In the news, a public relations nightmare for the New York Police Department Tuesday. That's when Twitter users were asked by NYPD to share personal photographs taken with officers. The New York Times reports that instead of feel-good photos, the department's Twitter feed was flooded with unfavorable images, ranging from a photographer being held down by officers to a bicyclist being knocked to the ground by police. One single tip to police overrides the Fourth Amendment. That's the majority ruling of the United States Supreme Court Tuesday when deciding the case of Navarrete versus California. In that case, a single 911 call claiming a truck ran a motorist off the road led to a stop of the truck on suspicion of driving while intoxicated. The resulting search of the truck turned up 30 pounds of marijuana. Writing for the minority, Justice Scalia said the court's opinion serves up a freedom-destroying cocktail and elevates an anonymous and uncorroborated tip above the bedrock of the Fourth Amendment. In a last-ditch attempt to demonize supporters of a Nevada rancher whom the Bureau of Land Management used aggressive force against over an unpaid bill, MSNBC's Chris Haynes condones the cruel slaughter of Bundy's cattle by the Bureau of Land Management during the intense standoff. Check out thelibertybeat.com for the full report on this story. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Brave New Books, now offering pro-pure water filtration, the only gravity-driven all-in-one fluoride removal system that alkalizes the water. Find them in Austin at 1904 Guadalupe Street or online, bravenewbookstore.com. Support comes from Mass Appeal, affordable, high-quality printing, now accepting Bitcoin, online, massappealinc.com. And support comes from growyourowngroceries.org, Homegrown food on every table. That's growyourowngroceries.org. This is the Liberty Bean on Wednesday, April 23rd, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. Controversy arises as popular brand names appear on some Common Core standardized English tests in New York. The New York Post reports that brands such as Nike, iPod, and Lifesavers were included in the wording of some tests taken by over a million students this month, affecting grades 3 through 8. Parents and other critics are questioning whether the inclusion was a type of advertising. State education officials and the test publisher are claiming the brands and accompanying trademarks were not paid endorsements, but had been contained in previously published passages used in the test. A directive signed this week outlines new restrictions placed on United States intelligence analysts. That includes how much contact an employee can have with a journalist without approval. Director of National Intelligence James Clapper made the new rules official with his signature. According to The Guardian, the restrictions make unauthorized contact with the media a fireable offense. A dead police officer, a hot dog cart, and an anti-corruption blogger. It's not the punchline to a tasteless joke, but the key players in the story that unfolded in Little Rock, Arkansas last week. ArkansasMatters.com reports that former police officer Todd Payne died after being tackled in the street by the owner of the hot dog cart, who also happens to be blogger Ian Bordeaux. The two had been involved in a long-running feud because Bordeaux featured Payne on his blog, Corruption Sucks. Payne apparently tried to set the hot dog cart on fire, leading Bordeaux to tackle him on the Arkansas street. Charges are not yet filed. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Bitmain Technology, creators of the Antminer S1 180 Gigahash Bitcoin Miner. No pre-order. Ships on time. Sometimes it's early. Buy yours today. Bitmaintech.com. And support comes from Affordable Sound. CD and DVD duplication, along with posters and promotions materials. Online, AffordableSound.com. Or give them a call, 512-459-5253. This is the Liberty Beat for Wednesday, April 23rd, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. According to attendees of a karaoke night at Charlie's Bar and Grill, a man 30 seconds into singing Michael Jackson's Man in the Mirror better get his act together and get it together fast. He f***ed up from the get-go. Coming in late on that first line singing totally off-key. He needs to shape up and get his head in the game pronto. Honestly, he needs to get serious right now or get the off the stage. I mean, what does he think this is? Living on a prayer? Claiming that this is turning into a train wreck, eyewitnesses say they are embarrassed for the man who has missed several key words despite staring at the prompter the entire 
f***ing time. You know, he could hit every last note for the remainder of the song, and I still don't know if that would be enough to turn this thing around. Man in the Mirror is the big leaves, so you better show up with your a game. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live, and we're launching into the third hour of the program. You're invited to bring up whatever you want toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And we've got Skype. You can Skype into the show, username lrn.fm. Still to come, we will continue on the list that we started several weeks ago, the 30 things to stop doing to yourself. Um, Also, we've been, for those of you just tuning in, for the majority of the show, talking about rape fantasies. Now, this is a topic that doesn't come up on talk radio uh, very often at all. It's a topic that I'm particularly uncomfortable discussing, and as are you, Brett. Very Um, much so, yeah. It's uh, it's definitely an area that I don't have any experience with. I'm not interested in uh, rape fantasies. You know, that's not my thing. But apparently a number of women have what they claim to be rape fantasies. Although there's another article over at Psychology Today where the psychologist uh, Paul Unitas, he argues that these aren't actually rape fantasies that these women are having. They're submission fantasies uh, because by virtue of the nature of the woman having the fantasy, she's always in control of that. And, of course, rape is about not having any control over a situation. And uh, to compare these rape fantasies to actual rape is, you know, kind of an insult to real rape victims. So there's uh, there's a lot of still, you know, there's no real firm answers on this. The first article that we read went through eight possible reasons why women are having, uh, some women are having these fantasies. And some of the reasons were contradictory, others confusing. So we'd love to get your thoughts, and we're going to go to the phones here. We've got... Deborah on the line. Deborah calling from Wyoming on Skype. Hey, Deborah. Good evening. How are you? Hey there. What's on your mind tonight? Well, um, I have just recently gotten home, so I haven't had the benefit of listening to you all except for just a few minutes before I got in. But uh, frankly, it kind of sounds like, uh, and I think you've admitted this, you're all talking about something that you don't understand and you're asking for someone to give some first-hand viewpoints, yes, I have please. to qualify this with, I am not uh, someone who fantasizes about rape. However, uh, I am a submissive, a sexual submissive. And so I can address that point of view uh, as far as the voluntary relinquishment of control. And the article you just mentioned on Psychology Today Sounds like I haven't read it, but it sounds like I would concur with the viewpoint they're putting forward. That these are not, in point of fact, rape fantasies, but are instead submission fantasies? Right, exactly. Um, I mean, submission is a very, uh, it sounds weird from maybe an outside point of view, but it's a very freeing uh, experience. You know, but as the article you mentioned points out, uh, that there is the woman making the selection and voluntarily choosing to do this. And I, I think that um, a fantasy that would involve no choice and no control certainly does, even from my point of view, sound a little off. But, uh, you know, I don't know if you have had the benefit of having any woman address the idea of voluntary submission. And, you know, so I open myself up for questions on that point of view, but uh, well, can't really... Looking at these, uh, what was called rape fantasies, but others have suggested should be called submission fantasies, looking at them as submission fantasies sure makes it a lot easier to talk about. It like, does, yeah. Taking the word rape out of the, the room it makes it a lot easier to kind of look at the uh, the issue, in which case it also makes it much more understandable, like, oh yeah, you want to relinquish control, and it's temporary, and it's you know consensual, whatever. And it doesn't seem like we you would even need to use the word fantasy fantasy because from my experience it happens all the time like Mm. i would say that i am more dominant and assertive uh but there are times when things are happening and i'm not in control and uh i don't have any objections yeah that's okay yeah Yeah, exactly Um, and yeah so i i think that from my personal uh experience there are times where you know the situation is just that 
the uh, the woman is submissive and it's okay. And I, I guess there's varying degrees of what that means. Um, right. Do you think that's as common? You weren't here for uh, Sir Reel's call earlier tonight, um, but he basically said that all women uh, want to be submissive, that this is uh, a, a female thing. Do you think there's any truth to that, uh, Deborah? Um, absolutely not. I've known far too many women who are absolutely and exclusively sexually dominant to believe that all women want to be submissive. So, uh, no, in my Do you think it's a majority of, uh, of women? No. Um, I... From my experience, I think it's pretty equal, evenly split, frankly. But that uh, is what you're into. Do you ever uh, reverse your role? Do you ever become no, the, uh, the dominant? No, I am not a switch. I am solidly submissive and happy to be on the bottom, as they say. Why do you feel like but, that? Uh, you know, The earlier suggestion from a caller uh, was that maybe this was some sort of uh, abuse that uh, people were you know, being suffered no, uh, at a young age. No, not in, in my situation, and very few... Uh, submissive women that I've spoken to have any kind of uh, any kind of abuse in their background. Anyway, certainly not to the extent where the majority of submissive women are acting this way because this is how they've been programmed or they're reliving some event. Uh, no, most submissive women I know are, you know, they're selective about who they're submissive to. They have definite boundaries on what is and is not acceptable, and uh, it's it's not a, you know, I'm not using my body. You can do whatever you want to with it, you know, kind of thing. Mm. They're, everybody has their limits and their organization. Now, that's not to say that there aren't broken people who behave in ways that would appear to be uh, a healthy, submissive attitude. You know, I've certainly run into a few people who were broken, too. Mm -hmm. And that's an entirely different thing. That's not what uh, domination and submission are about. I think there's also an impulse, too, when people observe or hear about a fetish or a sexual behavior that seems foreign to them. It's easy to just uh, assign the, that label to it. Like, like someone's wrong, something's oh, wrong with that Something's person. wrong with that person. They, and then to speculate that they um, came through some kind of abuse. Still, though, it's interesting to kind of look into people's uh, desires and see if there's any sort of root for them. Do you know if if, uh, you know if there was any influence at all, maybe not necessarily abuse, but was there some, some sort of influence in your past that led you down that road? Or is it just like that's always what you ever wanted? <laughs> Um, date myself a little bit here. I remember watching cartoons of the uh, ever entertaining Deadly Do Right and his uh, love of his life, Nell. Mm -hmm. And Nell was constantly being tied onto the railroad tracks by evil Snidely Whiplash. I watched those as a child and went, Ooh, that kind of looks fun. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, you know, that was way before uh, I ever got to the point of engaging in anything with any other person. But in my head, I went, wow, tied up. Well, hmm, that might be kind of cool. Would you would you liken your husband more to Snidely Whiplash or Dudley Do-Right? <laughs> <laughs> you hear it laughing outrorously in the background. Uh, I don't think he has a lot of Snidely in him, uh, but I don't think he's nearly as feckless as Dudley do right. I don't think I could put up with that. All right. I, that's all the questions I have. Brett, you got one for uh, Deborah? No, I, I feel like that was uh, some valuable information. Thank you so much, Deborah. Thanks, Deborah. Any other thoughts My you want pleasure. to share here? Um, no, just looking forward to seeing y'all at Porkfest. Yeah, very exciting. We'll see you guys there, and thanks for the call tonight. Appreciate hearing Certainly. from you. 855 450 free that is the uh, the toll free number here I, th I thought that was a good kind of recap and recap uh, on all this here it, yeah a nice conclusion we could say when she mentioned a cartoon i thought uh, she was going to say pepe le pew do you remember this oh, this yeah. guy yeah the skunk mm -hmm, the lover the skunk lover no.
Now, see that using the word lover there. I don't know about that. He was pretty. <laughs> he was pretty damn aggressive, as far as Good I'm concerned. Point. Eight fifty five, four fifty three. That's eight five five four five zero three seven three three. Coming up, things to just stop doing to yourself. There's thirty of them. We're not going to get through all thirty. We'll probably get through a handful. Uh, but we'll share them with you coming up, and you can share your thoughts with us about whatever's on your mind here on Free Talk Live. I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact in helping make a difference in the world and one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends to prove just how good it is we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience all you do is cover shipping go to coffee.freetalklive.com buzzbox coffee is organic so it contains no pesticides or toxins it's shade grown so less acidity and no heartburn it's top 1% Arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com Gold isn't for you? Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources, one of the world's premier gold and precious metal investing firms. I get it. You wouldn't buy gold if you believed that the government is doing a great job, that the Fed will stop handing out trillions of dollars like bailout candy, that Social Security would be there for you. That's not what's happening. You might even pass on gold if the stimulus package wouldn't fuel inflation, or that the dollar wouldn't lose value, or that your retirement would be secure. If all looks rosy to you, then now is not the time to buy gold. For the realists, there have never been more sobering reasons to diversify with gold. Since 2001, the U.S. dollar index has tanked 30% while gold has risen 300%. Right now, savvy investors are adding gold to their portfolios. You should, too. Find out what they know. Call us, and I'll send you 10 reasons why gold will do very well, free. 800-686-2237. 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. Immigrating to the Shire was easy. I was instantly plugged into a community of individuals who also care about peace, liberty, and justice and are willing to do something about it. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. There's a treasure hunt going on at mathgate.info, a Bitcoin treasure hunt. You can find Bitcoins by proving theorems. So learn some logic, do some math, find some Bitcoins. Even better, mathgate.info is designed to be used anonymously. So connect to mathgate.info through Tor, prove some theorems, find some anonymous Bitcoins. Don't wait. Others are already searching for the Bitcoins. Go to mathgate.info today and join the treasure hunt. There are anonymous Bitcoins to be had for the taking at mathgate.info. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. (laughs) 
It's Free Talk Live, and of course, you can bring up anything that you want. Just dial on in toll free at 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. And Skype into the show at username lrn.fm. We're going to get into the, or back into the 30 things that you should stop doing to yourself here in just a moment. Also, something you should do for yourself if you are a merchant. If you have things that you want to sell for Bitcoin, you can now get merchant services from blockchain.com. You know about blockchain.info. Blockchain.info is where you can go and get a free Bitcoin wallet. But blockchain.com, same group, they're just mer using that website to market a service and an, an app to merchants. And now there are some other competitors out there, but unlike those other competitors, there's no terms of service to which you must agree at blockchain.com. There's no ID requirements of any kind, and there's no fees. Uh, so you can accept Bitcoin safely, securely, and for free. At least that's my understanding. It's a brand new service that they launched over there uh, at blockchain.com. So go and check that out if you've been thinking about doing merchant services, or maybe, uh, or, you know, maybe you have one of the existing companies and you're not happy with them. Because I've heard complaints about both of the other major players in this market space. So maybe blockchain.com is going to bring something to the table that's going to change everything. I'm excited about it. Blockchain.com. Check that out. Uh, Brett is here from School Sucks Project. We have been talking about uh, a story about rape fantasy, but I think we've covered all of the bases on that one here tonight. We've still got about 24 things remaining on the 30 things to stop doing to yourself. Um, so let's pick up the list, shall we? Yes. Number six, stop trying to hold on to the past. You can't start the next chapter of your life if you keep rereading your last one. Yeah, absolutely. And the the hard thing about this, and people have a tendency to do this in, in a number of ways, it's very disempowering, isn't it? Because you're focusing all this mental energy into a time period over which you have no control. It's already happened. There's nothing good about yesterday because it you it's not accessible well this anymore. applies to both uh things right like it could be a good past it could be a bad past either way holding on to it's not a good thing because some people like to reminisce about the good old days sure yeah, uh, yeah. others you know are uh, has some sort of traumatic event that they're still focusing on or maybe right. you know it was an ex uh, lover who cheated on them or whatever you know whatever it is that happened to you in the past to continue to focus on what has already been what brought you to where you are today is to is to lose focus on the now and right. what it is that you're experiencing in this moment the relationships you have now making those better uh, making sure that you're as positive as you can be in your life instead of focusing on something that you either want to reproduce in the past which of course you'll never be able to totally reproduce whatever experience it is that you had that was desirable or whatever it is that was uh, traumatic to you that is is haunting you sure. to this day both of those things, focusing on either one of those kind of things is, uh, is detrimental. Yep. The message you're sending yourself, even on a subconscious level, is you have no control. You have no control because all this energy is going into a period of time that already happened, good or bad. And certainly, obviously, if it was bad in the past and you dwell on that, well, then it means you're going to be transferring a bunch of energy into another time you can't mm -hmm. control called the future in the form of worry. So, oh, yeah. so, you know, presence is very important. Presence is important to relationships. Presence is important to productivity. Presence is important to happiness. And I was telling you off the air that I had a stressful couple of weeks, you know, and most of it was channeling energy into future concerns. Right. And maybe a little bit into the past, like, mm -hmm. oh, you know, I shouldn't have done this. It was a health issue, I thought. Uh, and you know, still something that I'm I'm very concerned about. But um, it, it just felt like I had no control over anything. And uh, it was just, a, you know, maybe like within the last week, I said, OK, well, today is today. What can be done uh, here? And it was funny that just by shifting my focus into the time when I'm actually living, yep. it made a huge difference in how I felt. So that's very important. Yeah. Number seven, stop being scared to make a mistake. Doing something and getting it wrong is at least 10 times more productive than doing nothing. Every success has a trail of failures behind it, and every failure is leading towards success. You end up regretting the things you did not do 
far more than the things that you did. Yeah. Uh, I got some great advice on my show in the past from an entrepreneur who's actually a young guy and he's retired. His name is Jake DeSillis, and he does a show called The Voluntary Life. That's I think, right. On it's your on network. Yeah. FM, yeah. Yeah. And he, his advice for kids was, you know, start being an entrepreneur now. You mm -hmm. know, you're at home. You're a teen. You can afford it. Great. Yeah. You can afford to fail because if you want to be an entrepreneur, you're going to fail. You know, it's inevitable. It, sure. It, absolutely. So it's going to be, in, in many cases, numerous failures. You know, I think about the, the, the failures and the things that, that I've tried to do. They are significant. Mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> but see, the thing is that most people don't know this because you don't hear about the person until they're successful. They make it. Yeah. Right. There was a great story uh, about Sylvester Stallone. Do you know the story of the movie Rocky? Yes. Did we I talk about this? I think you might have told the story. Yeah. Yeah. I think I did. I think I might have told it on the show. It was but a real underdog kind of story. Absolutely. Rocky is the story of Sylvester Stallone's life as an actor and a writer. Mm -hmm. And he just kind of transfers the story into this boxer. So, and, and it's funny, at the end of Rocky, uh, spoiler alert, you, you know, you've had almost, what, 40 <laughs> years? Um, he doesn't win the big fight, mm. you know? But he made it. He got to the big fight. And that was such a victory for, uh, what are they what are they called boxers like that? Stumble bums. You know, down and mm. out kind of guys who... Just no one thinks will amount to anything. But Sylvester Stallone failed and failed and failed, and he knew what he wanted. And he walked away at one point, I think, from $300,000 that they wanted to give him to buy the script if they could buy him out of the movie. You know, like, you can't be in it. You're a funny-looking guy with a funny voice. You, yeah. you can't star in this movie. But he, and he said he no. And yeah. he had nothing. He had sold his wife's jewelry. He had sold his dog. Wow. To stay alive and turn down three hundred thousand dollars—that's a huge choice. Yeah, because that wasn't that wasn't his vision to make Rocky without him. So, so. Uh, some say you have to fail your way to success, and I think that's absolutely true. Yeah, and you never yeah. get to—you'll uh, never get to the success if you aren't willing to to try and then blow it. Yeah, and the reason. Times. Yeah, the reason why I brought him up, what made me think of that is, yeah, I remember listening to this interview where he said, "I just acclimated myself to the struggle," you know. So in other words, he had accepted that failure was a part of the path mm -hmm. to success. And he didn't want to just like, as soon as somebody could offer him some semblance of success or some counterfeit success, like here, have $300,000, but don't have your dream. Yeah. He said no, because he had accepted the failures that came with the pursuit. You got to know what you want and uh, before you'll figure out how to get it. Mm. Number eight, stop berating yourself for old mistakes. This is kind of the number six over again, I yes, think. Yes. We may love the wrong person and cry about the wrong things, but no matter how things go wrong, one thing's for sure. Mistakes help us find the person and things that are right for us. We all make mistakes, have struggles, and even regret things in our past. But you're not your mistakes, and you're not your struggles, and you're here now with the power to shape your day and your future. And every single thing that's ever happened in your life is preparing you for a moment that is yet to come. We'll come back with more of the 30 things that you should stop doing to yourself here in a little bit. And, uh, of course, take your calls, your additions to the list if you'd like to jump in here at 855-450-FREE. This is Free Talk Live. If you owe the IRS back taxes, listen carefully. Sweeping changes to IRS policies will help more people than ever eliminate their tax debts once and for all. And now I can help you reduce or eliminate your tax debts and end your tax nightmare. Hi, I'm Dan Pilla. I've helped thousands of people reduce and eliminate tax debts they couldn't pay. And after more than 30 years of experience dealing with the IRS, I can tell you there's no such thing as a hopeless tax case. And with the IRS's new policies, it's easier than ever to put your tax debt behind you once and for all. Call now at 800-346-6829 to learn how I can help you. You know your IRS debt will not go away by itself, but you don't have to live in fear anymore. Call 800-346-6829. Learn how I can help you eliminate wage and bank levies, release tax liens, and negotiate a settlement with the IRS that will put your tax nightmare behind you forever. Call 800-34-NO-TAX or go to TaxHelpOnline.com. That's TaxHelpOnline.com. Hi, I'm Derek J. To me, an activist's calling is to actively work to advance a cause. The cause for which I work is personal freedom. 
I believe my life is best when I engage in voluntary interactions and self-government. I reject the idea that anyone else has a higher claim to my life or my body than I do. I see people who call themselves the government as a threat to my personal freedom. I realize you may feel differently, but my relationship with the people who call themselves the government is completely involuntary. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. My name is Jacob Hornberger. I'm president of the Future of Freedom Foundation, which Congressman Ron Paul awarded for having an outstanding freedom website. Write us at FFF at FFF.org, and we'll send you a free three-month subscription to our monthly journal of libertarian essays and our booklet, Economic Liberty in the Constitution, which George Mason University economics professor Walter Williams praised in a recent column. That's FFF at FFF.org. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Do you know the difference between erudite and pedantic? If you do, you're probably pedantic. But seriously, a surprising number of erudite people mispronounce erudite, which has three syllables, not four. Say erudite, not erudite. Because you are judged by how you speak, you want to avoid common misstatements, especially if you're a job seeker. For instance, do you know the difference between imply and infer? Only a speaker can imply. Only a listener can infer. And when you say you'll be out of pocket, do you mean out of touch? Out of pocket means you're on your own dime, not yet reimbursed. And if anyone ever asks... Why do you always answer a question with a question? You should reply, do I do that? Just kidding. From survivalspeech.com, I'm Holland Cook. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, take control of the airwaves here, toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We're talking about the 30 things that you should stop doing to yourself. Lots of good advice here in this one article from LifeBuzz. We've managed to uh, come back to it again and again. We're only up to number 9 on the list of 30. And we'll continue that here in moments. want to let you know there's a Bitcoin theorem-proving treasure hunt going on right now at mathgate.info. You can find Bitcoins by proving theorems. So learn some logic, do some math, and find some Bitcoins. Even better, mathgate.info is designed to be used anonymously. So you can connect to mathgate.info through Tor. Prove some theorems and find some anonymous Bitcoins. Don't wait. Others are already looking for those Bitcoins. So go to mathgate.info today and join the treasure hunt. That's Mathgate. Dot info. Brett Vinod with me here from the School Sucks Project at schoolsucksproject.com. Good to be here. And we're doing the 30 things from lifebuzz.com, 30 things to stop doing to yourself. And number nine is to stop trying to buy happiness. Many of the things we desire are expensive, but the truth is the things that really satisfy us are totally free. Love, laughter, and working on our passions. Absolutely. Yeah, there's, we, you know, something that people, I hear people say a lot, and I've probably said a whole bunch of times in the past, is I'll be happy when. Mm. I can't wait until when. And, you know, people say that, Brett, you're kind of a one-trick pony trying to tie everything to school. But uh, school throughout, you know, its various stages, elementary, middle school, high school, even college, seems to be about deferring happiness. 
because other people know what's good for you and you can be happy. You know, though, this might not be fun right now, but you'll see someday you'll thank me. I mean, parents say that, teachers say that, you'll thank me later. Yeah, it sucks now, but someday you'll graduate and be free. Well, yeah, but then we find out when we graduate, we have to go to college, and then mm-hmm. it's the same thing. And then it just becomes a habit that for a lot of people lasts their entire lives. You know, they get a job. Oh, is it Friday yet? You know, and and ultimately all this happiness is deferred until something called retirement, when people just this is when it finally happens. <laughs> this is when I will finally have, oh, you know, man. the leisure and the pleasure that in many ways, and, and it's not like people live pleasureless, leisureless existences, but they keep grinding away and sacrificing happiness for, you know, some illusory time in the future. Well, right. I mean, you can have leisure, but that doesn't necessarily you're being you, you're happy, right? Like you can engage in leisurely activities like sports and uh, watching television or playing video games, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be a happy person when you're done with it. Maybe it'll distract you from yeah, exactly. uh, from the negativities or whatever it is that's bothering you in life. And and ultimately, that's what buying happiness that people are doing when they're trying to fill whatever the gap is, whatever hole they have uh, in their their own person with things, with uh, you know, buying stuff, you know, get a, a new big screen TV or whatever it is that the fad of buying is, you know, a new car, whatever it is that you'd have told yourself that I need to have this, yeah, and uh, and. You know, maybe it comes from the the momentary sense of satisfaction that people do get when they buy something. That kind of opening the box experience. Oh, you get something from Amazon. And you open the box up and presents. It's, yeah, it's got that kind of feel to it. And so people are are probably seeking that to some extent because it it feels like some semblance of happiness for a short moment. Which of course is why we see problems with hoarders for instance uh people who like will just keep buying things just to have that satisfaction of having bought something that they wanted uh, yeah. because they can't get real satisfaction from their their own choices and their own decisions in life there's even a term for this that apparently is completely acceptable in society and it's retail therapy oh my you know have you never heard that no no, like just going out and going shopping. And I've found, I've actually found myself doing this from time. <laughs> I have two bad habits, right? Sometimes I'll just be sitting there and I'll get to a lull where I'll have nothing else to do. You know, like I'll be done for, you know, with work for the day. Mm-hmm. And I will say, I've caught myself doing this uh, a couple of times. Shopping. Now, not that I should just go shopping because that's insane to me. <laughs> like just going shopping. Like maybe we'll shop. I don't uh-huh. get. No. All right, you're not as bad I, as some people. Then. Right. But I say I'll sit there and I'll go. Now, what do I need mm. from Walmart? <laughs> what do I need from AutoZone? Another thing that I that I do all so the time. So you don't time, have a list uh, like a shopping list. That, no, but uh, I'll say there should be a list, mm-hmm. or, or I'll go to eBay. I'm say surely Uh-oh. there are things that I need to buy. <laughs> so I actually, using the program Evernote that we've talked about before, yeah. I started making a wish list. Yes, this, this is these important. are the things that I really want. Uh, and I have this other thing with with new food. So the wish list has uh, short circuited this other process. Yeah, of yeah, wondering. yeah, yeah. That's good. Uh, Probably save you some money that way too. But until recently, I've had this new food issue where yeah. I'll go shopping, right? And I'll go out and I'll spend 80, 90, 100 bucks for weeks worth of groceries. I have an issue where I won't go shopping. It's probably been three or four weeks since I've been to the grocery store. Okay, so, but you know what? I envy you because you're getting tons of new food. You're getting new food every day because you're eating, right? I guess, yeah. You, you eat every day. That's brand new food, man. That's not food that was sitting in yeah, your refrigerator. Yeah, a lot of it's coming out of a freezer. Oh, well, okay, but it's, wait a minute. Anyway, what's coming, the issue that All right, uh, that so having? new food is I'll go shopping, and then I'll, I know at home I have a fridge full of stuff, mm. but I'd have to cook it. So then, like, it happens, you know what happens a lot when I leave here, right? Yeah. I went shopping today when I came back into town. I went shopping and spent, like, 50 bucks today, just right. on enough for four days. And already, I feel hungry right now. Mm. And I'm thinking, like, I might hit up that supermarket after this and find some new food, <laughs> you know? Like, that, I just, so you've got some sort of thing with having new food. 
Ah, uh, yeah. Like constantly a, a stream of new ingredients, or is it like stuff that you can just? No, I, I have a very like limited diet. I don't mm -hmm. eat that many things, but there are things at the supermarket down the street that I'm thinking about, and I'll go there and I'll pick it up and I'll walk out of there and I'll be like, oh boy, I'm gonna eat this stuff right now, mm -hmm. and it's like exciting in a way that going home. Did and you crack it open in the car? No, 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 no. Okay. I go home. I have a very, you know, I go home. I set up YouTube. I <laughs> make sure I'm not going to be disturbed. Food, it's I, 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 it's an event for yeah. me. Um, a ritual, almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I usually only eat like one or two meals a day. So uh, I like to be entertained while I eat, hmm. too. You know, YouTube's good for that. YouTube is good for, because you can just keep switching through videos, mm -hmm. you know. ADD but all the that's way. That's another issue. Uh, so, yeah, that's that's my new food, which kind of speaks to this, my new food issue. So, but, okay, so, you know, we know that buying things isn't going to bring you happiness. Right. If anything, it's going to bring you a bunch of things. And yeah. then you're not going to be very happy when you have to eventually get rid of all of those things, or at least some of those things. You can only have so many things. <laughs> or move mm, from yeah. one place to another. Not good. Yep. I remember one time there was nothing I treasured more than my book collection. How's my, that going now? <laughs> my collection of just tremendously heavy old books. I like books, but I don't like uh, book collections because I feel like they just sit on a shelf and I never look at them. So why the hell do that, do I have them? Oh, no, because I had this fantasy at one time, like especially when I was – I mean, I was collecting books well into the time that I started my show, like mm -hmm. uh, over four years ago. And I said, yeah, you know, I'll have like a bookshelf in the background with all my books. Ah, that way I'll be smart. working away. No, no, no. I'll just be working away. And then I'll say, ah, I need to get some information out of a book. And I picture, <laughs> I just fantasize myself like sliding across the office to the bookshelf and thumbing through looking for, uh, you know, some obscure footnote instead of just sitting right where I was Google. and Googling it, yeah. which is what I do. But what happened to the book collection? Did you get rid They're of them? They're in boxes. You still have them? I still Move them. <laughs> Which is why, you know, word to the wise, don't collect books. Do you have, like, a storage facility, or are they sitting uh, in your house? Uh, I have some stuff in a storage facility, and This I... is too much. See, I would never, I can't get to uh, the point of having a storage facility. I would never want to get to that point. That would be the indicator that it, Ian, you've gone too far. Oh, yeah, yeah. You it's, have too much. I don't need the book, the storage facility for the books. I just have one because I, I do move quite a bit. I see. So most of them are in boxes in the basement of the house where I live now. We'll come back with more here. Uh, one segment remains tonight. Still enough time to get you with your thoughts in if you dial in toll free at 855 450 free. Number 10 on the list of things to stop doing to yourself. That's coming up next. Free Talk Live. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I am is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. Gentlemen, in search of a million dollar smile that'll make them take notice, I mean really get their attention, then get the mud. My Magic Mud. The fluoride free whitener with no chemicals, additives, GMOs, or bad taste. And safe to swallow. My Magic Mud detoxifies, reduces sensitivity, cleans and strengthens your teeth while it whitens. Comes as a powder for pure whitening power. Start looking good for that special someone. Get the mud now. MyMagicMud.com the next 30 seconds could save your life or that of someone you love. The Peacekeeper Mini by Tiger Light is the latest in high-tech self-defense. Combining the number one rated Tiger Light with the amazing new Bluetooth GPS crowd alert technology, there is nothing like it. Endorsed by top police, military, and self-defense experts. Pre-order now at one-third the retail price at Indiegogo.com. Search Peacekeeper Mini. 
Free Talk Live. Hey, Jeff, what's up? South Florida, man, that's that's one of the best places to go out and have fun. There's nothing like going out shooting a game of pool, drinking a few beers, and seeing some dancing girls. I mean... Nothing <laughs> quite like it, huh, Jeff? <laughs> nothing quite like it. To Can't me. do that anywhere else in the country. <laughs> I mean, Only South in Florida. Florida. Tampa and Miami. Something. Well, in most other places in the country, you can't do it all in the same building. <laughs> well, let, me, let me tell you something. South Florida, man, is in, you know, especially down in Miami, I mean, that's that's party station down there, guys. A lot of people don't even go out till around 11 o'clock or midnight. Lulu's Bar and Grill, they, had it, they were selling these T-shirts. It said, I lost my pants at Lulu's Bar last night. Lulu's? Yeah, that sounds Lulu's. a little fruity. No, no, no. It's, it's a nice place down in downtown Fort Lauderdale. But anyways. Uh, it must be a nice place with shirts that say, I lost my pants at Lulu's. <laughs> Come on in. Um, Leave your pants behind. (laughs) Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, inviting you to take control of the remaining moments of the show. Here, just enough time for your call. If you dial now, toll free to 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And joining you tonight, it's Ian. And Brett. Brett's here, courtesy of his website, schoolsucksproject.com. There's a lot more of Brett and uh, other stuff for your edification there. Uh, By the way, the Free State Project is the reason why we're here together mm-hmm. yeah uh, i would probably not know you if it were not for the free state project the uh, free state project is bringing people who love liberty to the same geographic area new hampshire is the chosen destination you can go to freestateproject.org to learn more and get the 101 reasons to move to new hampshire if you love freedom if you understand what freedom liberty is all about your freedom to live your life how you want as long as you don't hurt anybody else and that you understand that in order to be free you have to allow other people to be free with their lives as well. So go to freestateproject.org, learn about that. The best thing you can do to learn about the Free State Project is come to New Hampshire and visit, especially during the Porcupine Freedom Festival, which is coming up June 22nd through the 29th. We're literally two months away from this amazing event in the woods of northern New Hampshire, the White Mountains, the vista, the view is spectacular, but the people are the real reason to come to the Porcupine Freedom Festival. Expecting around 1,500, maybe even 2,000 people this year. It uh, was huge last year, the year before that. This is going to be the 11th year of the Porcupine Freedom Festival. Free Talk Live is going to broadcast live every single night. Uh, 7 to 10, we'll be there every night from Sunday through Saturday nights, which is always a lot of fun. Great great opportunity to meet a bunch of Free Talk Live listeners and for listeners to meet other listeners as well as other people involved in the Free State Project. If you've been hearing us talk about the Free State Project and how amazing it is to actually be with physically in reality hundreds of Over a thousand other people who actually love freedom enough to do something about it, to pick up their lives and move here. This is the place to really experience that sense of community for an entire week. Hey, maybe you can't make it for the whole week. Don't. Don't not come up for the weekend. Come up for the weekend. If that's all you can do is come up for Friday and Saturday and Sunday, it's worth the trip to come to the Porcupine Freedom Festival. It's an amazing experience. Great people. All kinds of fun activities going on throughout the week. I can't even scratch the surface of all the stuff that they're doing this year. It's a DIY uh, theme and DIY, do it yourself, DIY. 
actually. Anyway, do it yourself is the theme this year, and so there's going to be a lot of stuff to learn and get involved in and create. And, of course, the most important thing to create are relationships. These are people, if you're joining the Free State Project or considering joining the Free State Project, you're going to get to meet a lot of your neighbors, your future neighbors here at this event. So, really, it's worth it. Uh, it's 60 bucks, gets you in for the whole week. That doesn't include your lodging. It is a campground, so you can you can camp pretty cheap, especially if you share the campground with others. If you're looking for rides up, the Free State Project actually has a Porkfest group on Facebook. There's also a Porkfest subforum on the Free State Project's forums at forum.freestateproject.org. And again, the Porkfest group, P-O-R-C-F-E-S-T. Look for porkfest.com. Uh, you can go and get registered there, learn more about the event, look at pictures from last year, that kind of thing. Porkfest.com. We'll look forward to seeing you there. As we go to the phones and to your calls and thoughts, we'll continue with the 30 things to stop doing to yourself here in a little bit if we get a chance. But Nick is actually on the line here in Oregon. Nick, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian and Brett. Hey, how are you guys doing? Hey, hey Nick. Great. Go ahead, sir. Um, I'm a high school student. I'm a freshman. I'm going to a charter school here in Oregon. And uh, I'm thinking about uh, dropping out. <clears throat> I've started my own um, yak herd. And uh, I'm thinking that that is the way I want to go with my life. But What is that? Not... Tell, tell us more. What is that? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Um, a yak is it's a sort of a type of cow. It's, oh, it's a not... yak herd. Okay, yeah. That's yeah. what I thought he was <laughs> I thought, saying. I thought, I thought you said a yakherd is one word, and, ah, I, and I didn't know what it was. But a herd... Of yaks. Sure. Okay. How does yeah. one start a herd of yaks as a high school uh, junior? Uh, so freshman, freshman, yeah. Excuse me. Well, he becomes an anarcho-capitalist and uh, does not like to conform with society and does not like regulations in agriculture and finds a animal that is not regulated as much as cattle. And then I hmm. found a farm in Bend, Oregon, Pine Mountain Ranch. Um, they have a, a large yak facility, and I bought some from them. Wow. So you had some savings. Uh, you purchased some yaks. What does a yak cost? Um, they can. There's a lot. Of, it all depends on age and gender. Um, I got uh, four yaks for one, two pregnant cows and two bull calves for about $2,000. Um, I did not have a savings for this. I actually am now in debt, but it, how does one get a loan as a freshman in high school? Parents? Parents. Okay. Yes. So parents. they're behind you on this. Yes. Awesome yeah, like the, story and, so far. Yeah. Well, what is it your plan? I mean, are you? Uh, what do you? What does one do with a yak? Does one slaughter a yak and make yak meat? Uh, what, what's your plan to profit from the yaks? Yeah, mostly meat. I'm thinking about dairy. Nobody in the Americas, South and North are selling commercial um, milk. Um, so I would be the first yak dairy if I can do it. Um, wow. That I would, would be, like to do that. Dream. It's hard, but yeah. So, um, and then also hair. Yeah, so school is really not... Uh, it's, it, it's kind of probably taken away from, from this stuff that you're really into right now, right? Definitely. How long have you been thinking about dropping out? Um, about a month. All right. So, uh, obviously, you're an extremely smart young man, so I would guess that you have considered the possibility that by the time you're 16, maybe you might not be interested or as committed or as passionate about the yak herding anymore. Um, do you worry that, or has anyone suggested that you should worry about maybe erasing some of your options. I know you're just listening, but I'm throwing up air quotes with my fingers that school creates. And, and you know, I mean, I, I, there are obviously real things to think about because it is, it is a huge decision. And obviously I would like to see nobody going to government school at your age, but I understand that, you know, we live in a, a different kind of world than what I envision. So... Yeah, I mean, what, what, how much planning, how much thought have you put into this? Have you, have you gone through the, the what ifs? Um, I've gone through it a little bit. I've talked to my parents about this. I've talked a little bit with our um, college planner person at school. Mm -hmm. um, it, I've got great test scores. I am pretty smart. I'm not trying to brag. I have almost all straight A's. I have a 4.0. 
Um, you're a 14 year old yak farmer. Yeah, you're doing great for sure. Yeah, oh, definitely. <laughs> well, what's the parents' response when you talk um, to them? Their response is, well, if you do this, you're not going to be able to get back into this charter school and you're not going to be able to go to college if you don't get a diploma. And uh, I could, I'm thinking that I could go to almost any college I want with the grades and test scores that I have. So I am really closing a lot of doors to do it, but I am really not interested in school. I'm, it's not something that I like. I don't like learning what they want me to learn. It's just not interesting, and I don't think that I would use it unless I did end up going to some nice school, becoming a lawyer or something. Sure. I'll tell you, these Ivy League schools, you know, they like stories. I used to be a college consultant, and I was working with this girl who was from South Vietnam and had, you know, just wasn't wasn't brilliant, right? But I was helping her with the admissions process for Harvard because – Harvard likes those kinds of stories. Now, obviously, mm. their the colleges also consider things like ethnic diversity. That's important. But, you know, a good story that a 17 or 18 year old can bring to a pretty decent school can go a long way. You know, she she was older than I mean, this was like 2006 that I was doing this and she was in her mid 20s. So she or maybe late 20s, early 30s. She had lived through the Vietnam War and she had a story now. I dropped out of high school when I was a freshman to be a yak herder is quite a story, especially if you're successful at doing it. So the the idea, I mean, yeah, there there is the reality that it might close some doors and it might make it harder to get back on a college track. Just being a yak farmer doesn't open the door of every Ivy League school in the country, that's for sure. Um, so, yeah, you might certainly be creating some challenges for yourself. But I think there's people that you can you can talk to. There's endless resources for this today. I, I encourage you to check out you know my website, uh, schoolsucksproject.com, and and you can hook up with some people there. You can hook up with me directly, and you know maybe we can we can give you some advice or we can provide some resources because. Yeah, it's a tough decision to make right now, but, you know, the more information... I feel like he should follow his instincts here. I mean, he's interested in doing the, the farming thing. He's not getting any of that at school. He's not liking the school, and the parents are supportive. So yeah. if your parents are willing to support your choices on this, I say go and, you know, set yourself free of this and do your own education and the things that you want to learn on yeah. school. And just get as much information as you can to prepare yourself for those challenges. Good yeah. luck, Nick. Thanks for the call tonight. We'll see you tomorrow at freetalklive.com. Thank you. Bye. A congressman recently revealed that legislation totaling 2,900 pages and involving more than $1 trillion was available to members of Congress for less than 48 hours to study and consider. That's over 60 pages of legislation per hour. Do you think anyone read the entire bill? I'm Jim Babka with DownsizedDC.org. Consider a proposal buried in a 3,200-page, $388 billion bill, which would have empowered committee chairmen or their agents to examine Americans' tax returns. When this horrible provision came to light, no one claimed to know how it got into the bill. One congressman questioned said, I didn't write it, I didn't approve it, I wasn't even consulted. If your attorney represented you this way, he might be disbarred. But this is how Congress represents you every day. That's why DownsizedDC.org has created the Read the Bills Act. You can force Congress to read their bills before they pass them at DownsizedDC.org. Imagine for a moment a radio program, the most personal of mediums, that reaches hundreds of thousands of people on more than 140 radio stations across the U.S. and around the world through the Internet with podcasts and live streams. Imagine the advertising is affordable from $600 to $6,000 a month. Free Talk Live is that program. We will work with you to get clicks, calls, views, or sales. Email me at mark at freetalklive.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. 
Cop Block Radio is up next, live after the news, on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. Radio VR. Good morning and welcome to Radio VR. We're broadcasting from Washington, D.C. and around the world on voiceofrussia.com slash U.S. I'm Rick Young. Today is Wednesday, April 23rd, 2014. Radio VR News. President Obama begins a four-nation Asian tour in Japan today. White House correspondent Mark Smith reports. While trade and the challenge of China top the agenda, the president's also visiting countries in various stages of grief, from South Korea, where hundreds may have died in last week's ferry sinking, to Malaysia, whose jet vanished over the ocean last month. National Security Chief Susan Rice notes in both cases, U.S. forces rushed to help. In each instance, the United States has been able to lend prompt and very effective support to our friends and partners. And while Japan's rebounded from its 2011 earthquake, the Philippines, where Obama ends his trip, is still recovering from November's Typhoon Haiyan with U.S. aid. Mark Smith at the White House. Before he left for his overseas trip, President Obama is promising victims of a deadly Washington state mudslide the federal government will not forget about them. Correspondent Martin DeCaro has the story. After an aerial tour of the area where the search for bodies continues one month after the disaster, President Obama met emergency personnel, then praised their work. To see the strength in adversity of this community, I think, should inspire all of us. Speaking at a 